Okay, I'll call the meeting to order. I think Jonathan from FCAT said we're good to go. Yep. So um, I'll call the meeting to order of the South, uh, South the Deerfield Select Board Board of Health meeting for May 19, 2020. Um, it's about 6.01 or so, at least it says on my clock. Um, so this is um, at the main meeting room, Municipal Offices, 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield. There are members all over town today <laughs> and other places. Um, so we're all meeting remotely. Um, this is also going to be a meeting that I'll pass over in a moment to um, Capital Improvement Planning Committee and Finance Committee. So um, meetings normally held at the municipal offices are being held remotely with adequate alternative means of public access and where required public participation provided in accordance with the governor's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 20. Um, Remote meeting connection. This is broadcast to the Frontier Community Access Television, FCAT. The dial-in number is 706-913-1155. And the, um, you would enter, enter an attendee pin of 815-747-69. Um, presenter's pin is different pin. Um, please check your email. So um, call-in participants should dial in. Um, and then enter the pin when prompted. The public is encouraged to log in using their computers or smartphones for full function participation. To log in, please register at w, uh, http colon forward slash forward slash uh, webinar at any uh, webinar.anymeeting.com forward slash 815-747-269. Meaning attendees should mute phones unless asking questions or commenting. All attendees should wait uh, to speak until other participants are finished. And then if you are going to speak, just say your name clearly. And then when you're done, you could just say finished, uh, just so people don't step on everybody. Um, so I'll turn, I'll now announce the meetings open. I'll turn it over to uh, Jeff Upton, who, who is going to open the Capital Improvement Finance Committee. And then I guess uh, Jim Bresky will open the Finance Committee. So go ahead, go ahead, Jeff. Good evening. I'm uh, Jeff Upton, co-chair of the Capital Improvement Planning Committee, and I am calling uh, the meeting, the Capital Improvement Planning meeting of May 19th to order at uh, 6.04, and we have a few things for discussion tonight, and we do have one request that we're going to need to entertain. Uh, what I think I'll do is, at this time, I will uh, turn it over to John Peretsky so he can open the Finance Committee meeting. And then, uh, John, when you're done calling that meeting, if you could turn it back to me. And hopefully the chief is with us so we can entertain that uh, capital uh, request so we can put that to bed and move on to the budget. So I'm finished. So, John? I'm John Peresky, Vice Chairman of the Finance Committee, uh, calling a meeting of the committee order at 6.05 p.m. on May 19th, um, a video conference and telephone. Uh, so the attendees have to state their name, who's here. And, of course, John Peresky is here. Um, who else? Who's Anybody you? else? Jeff Upton. Jeff Upton is here. Um, that's it. No Bruce, no Julie. Oh, Bruce, Bruce St. Peter's was there. Julie Talbot here. And Julie's there. Great. Bruce is here? I didn't hear him. Yeah, he's yeah, there. Bruce St. Peter's. Okay. Um, so, I said I'll turn the meeting back over to Jeff Upton, Capital Plan. Oh. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Capital plan. Uh, I'm going to do a roll call to make sure that we have a forum here. Uh, forum, I should say. Excuse me. And uh, I'm Jeff Finn, co-chair. And one at a time, if you could call your name as far as uh, members that are present of the capital improvement me, uh, planning planning committee. Jack Davies. John Peresky. Oops, sorry, Jack. Ken Cutterbeck. Skip Sobieski. 
Carolyn Ness? Ness? Oh, sorry, John. That's... <laughs> Okay, so so we have we have uh, I believe uh, Rachel or is Rachel uh, here? No, I think she's the only one that's not here, John. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay, so Rachel's Rachel's the only one that's absent from the capital uh, improvement planning committee. Now, is John Pachurik online, Chief? Yes, I'm here. Okay, so Chief Paturk is here. All right, so what, what I plan to do as far as the Capital Improvement Planning Committee, there was one request here that has, has arrived as of this morning and that the Capital Improvement uh, Committee needs to entertain uh, because uh, obviously we didn't have information on this request previously even though there is some general discussion on it at some point earlier. So what I would like to do is I would just like to focus on this one request right now and uh, either recommend or not recommend it, and then we will go to the budget hearing because the capital improvement plan itself will come into play during the budget discussion. So uh, it would be easier to do that. Uh, once we'll pass this capital request. The capital request, what we have here is uh, the purchase looking for land acquisition on North Main Street adjacent to Frontier Regional, also adjacent to the additional parcel the town is purchasing. Property appraisal came back at $36,000, and therefore... Uh, this request is for the Capital Improvement Planning Committee to support the acquisition of the additional parcel of property for the $36,000. Now, this would be connected to the recre recreational field purchase and development. So, uh, this is additional land that we voted uh, earlier for uh, purchase to provide for recreational field. And Chief, if you just do a quick overview, with maybe the explanation, my understanding is, is that uh, that 36000 will come out of the uh, 1.150 that was approved earlier? Yes. Yeah, and if that is correct, you could explain that. So, you're not really uh, requesting any additional monies at this point. Uh, what you're doing is looking for uh, just a recommendation and support from the uh, Capital Improvement Committee for this? Yes, there's no additional funding request to this. This would be covered in the $150,000 contingency fund that we did place in there. And the bylaw actually states that the Capital Improvement Planning Committee has to weigh in on all land acquisition for the town. So we are following the bylaw, and we obviously are soliciting the PIPC's approval for the additional land acquisition. So can I ask a question? Sure. Um, so is this, is this the additional part of the Mark property? Because if I recall, you, John, you, you um, negotiated with Mr. Mark to sell like the front part of the property on, on North Main Street, but he, yeah. he was going to keep, like, the back part? Yeah, Mr. Mark was ultimately going to part with between two to four acres with us, and he wanted to keep some of the backside for mm -hmm. what reason, I don't know. The problem is, is he was 97 years old, and after he came up with that verbal agreement with the town, he passed away. So now the property's in an estate, and it's being dealt with with probate with his two daughters. Um, and ultimately, we've got the eight foot five acres out there, which combines together for a total of 16 acres between the two parcels. So it's the, this is the additional part that, that he, was, he was reluctant to sell for whatever reason. Yes, it, it okay. basically it's taken the whole thing per se right. versus the two to four acres. I think that's good. I think that's excellent to have the whole, the whole property. Yeah, and I agree with you. It makes yeah. the most sense for um, the town in the long haul. Right. 
And at the same time, uh, as we noticed with our five year with our five year plan going forward, we were putting in a hundred thousand uh, dollars anticipated per year for for the wreck. So uh, or, or they had they had requested a little over a million. So this should e- eliminate some of that, obviously. Yeah, Jeff. Uh, I heard. Question. Pardon, Chief. Jeff, uh, John Bresky has a question. Yeah, question. Um, this, I just want to confirm, all being associated with this, the first and any improvements to it, it's all going to be CPA money. Yes, along with the CPA support. and grant. Yeah. I, I was just going to say it's going to be grant. So. Hopefully, as we go along, John. Okay, hopefully, and if the grants don't come? Well, if the well, grants don't come, the CPA funds are eligible for up to three years in accordance with the warrant article. That means that we can actually do the engineering this year, make an educated decision this fall. If it's, it, uh, I guess, a good time to put it out to bid because companies are hard up for work, we may get a better price this fall. Or we may say, you know what, they suspended the grant program this year. We're going to wait from next summer until all the finances are more better known. And that, that community preservation fund, fund money sits there for three years. I guess I'm just trying to make sure that it's not going to come to any part of it. won't be part of the omnibus, omnibus budget or capital planning budget. None of it is. It's all CPA or grant. None of it is. It's all CPA funds. And right, right. now we've just collected about $200,000 additional in CPA. There's not 3.24. There's about 3.48 right now. All right. Thank you. Right. Also, also we're in a situation of, of uh, even though he, uh, the chief put a dollar amount to the property there, he is not asking for an increase in the bottom line of the 1150000 that uh, the uh, Capital Improvement Committee had already recommended. So basically, we're able to pick up this additional property within within the same dollar amount of what we had for the other property. So it's not cost or won't be costing us additional monies this time, anyways. Are there any other questions or comments or? Um, this is Ken Cutback. I just wanted to say that I'm fully in support of this. I, I think getting these properties in in the town's possession would be the, just an incredible coup. It's been sitting out there for too long waiting to happen. So I'm glad to thank you, John, for your efforts uh, putting this together. Absolutely. I was just going right, to say, I... oh, Go I just want to say that I'm in favor of it because ultimately it's better for the kids, and I think it will have a positive impact on the operational budget at Frontier as well, which, of course, we're on the hook for 50 percent-ish. So um, I think this makes the most sense. Yep. All right, do I have a, a motion to move this forward for a vote for recommendation? Um, I'll make a motion to approve the... $36,000 for the purchase of the additional parcel of the Mark property. I'll second it. Oh, okay. Okay, I have I have a motion that's been made. It has been seconded. And is there any further discussion? Okay, could we somewhat try to move this in order of, of members? So, uh, Ken, would you like to lead off? Yes. You have yes, to say I'd your... like to lead off, and I'm voting yes. <laughs> John, uh, John okay. Presky, I'll vote yes. Uh, Jack Davey, I'm voting yes. Uh, Carolyn, yes. I vote yes. Did, did Ken second that motion? Carolyn? He did, right? Uh, yes, yeah, Carolyn. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, yes. Okay, and Chuck Upton will vote yes. So that means that it's six zero zero for the vote. 
And at this point in time, uh, I think what would be appropriate, instead of trying to push through with the rest of the capital stuff, I think we should probably put that off until it comes up during our budget discussion. So uh, as of as of the, time, yeah. the capital expenditure request is uh, approved or recommended, let me put that way. Yes, a question, comment? Yeah, this is Ken Cutterback. I just, I'm, late this afternoon, I discovered that I thought a capital request had gone through from the school uh, uh, about an un, sort of semi-unanticipated expenditure, or not semi-unanticipated, it was unanticipated until recently, but um, the school, if, if we continue down the path that it's been going, is um, not able to offer one-to-one -one, um, devices for students in the school. And uh, at our school committee meeting last week, we discussed the, uh, the possibility of $60,000 expenditure to buy um, Chromebooks to get the school fully in compliance with being able to do one-to-one -one purchases. And the committee wanted to try and move forward with that purchase and get into the pipeline for an order before um, before the market really explodes and even more people are trying to get in and we could run into a shortfall. So we had authorized the administration to submit a $60,000 um, capital request. I'm going to, uh, for those of you that are on uh, I'm going to try and share a screen if I can find it <laughs> with everybody so that you can see what I'm talking about. And, and basically, it, it involves the purchase of 231 Chromebooks at about $225 each. The money would be taken. Um, and it's on the top of the screen, the share your screen. It's up How's that? Top. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I just opened the darn thing and forgot to share it. <laughs> let, me, let me try this again. I love technology. So Casey, Trevor, Carolyn, that's all authorized in the COVID money. Yes, yes. I was just going to yes. mention that that's that we, what we we've were, been that's working what we were thinking. on getting that going. I sent a copy to Brenda uh, just so she'd have that, and then we'd um, we'd get working on trying to get that covered. We were going to purchase out of um, uh, school choice, so we didn't, so it wasn't hitting the town. But if there's another avenue later in our meeting, we're looking to request from Sean Cronin and DL, uh, DLR to update, um, to increase our, um, you know, negative, negative, uh, spending that we can do on COVID, um, up to about 150,000 and, to, you know, so that we can group in some of these larger expenses that we're getting from different departments so that we can hopefully get all this covered by, by COVID expense with the money that's coming from the, from the feds to the state to us. But you may want to ultimately discuss what that is really quick so people even in CIPC understand yep. it and knows what you're talking about. Yeah. You mean the amount? Or, yeah, or the, amount, the program itself, people don't know really what's going on with it. Sure. Sure. Yeah, we're, we're all learning as it, as, it gets, as, it, as it gets to us. Um, so this was uh, part of the CARES Act that, that the federal government put together um, to help, you know, uh, communities deal with this. Uh, with the expenses that are incurred by this. Uh, so there's a, a tranche of that first, um, I think it was $3 trillion that came out that went to the federal government. We got uh, to the state governments. We got a little bit of that money, uh, but it went to really focus just on, you know, public health and it, and it actually traveled through the FERCOG. Um, and so we had money for staffing, for nurses, for tracing COVID, you know, cases and all of that. Uh, very limited on what we could spend the money for. This second tranche of money is a little bit more open um, that what we what we can apply for. Um, you know, we can pay for food. We're hoping that this program, it looks like we can pay for uh, Chromebooks so that we can make sure that the students have one-to-one -one, um, capability for, for learning because we just don't know right now what the fall is going to look like. Um, we've been trying over the years, we've been buying Chromebooks and iPads for the younger kids. Um, to try and get to the one-to-one -one ratio, but it's expensive as you can see. So this um, it, this gives us an opportunity to kind of catch up. You know, we've been behind and we've had some for different wings, but now we'll, we'll hopefully have one-to-one -one so kids don't have to share. We don't have to worry about germs kind of going around it and they'll be able to educate themselves from home. So 
Yeah, so the basis behind it is Massachusetts got $2.7 billion. Deerfield has currently been allocated $444,432. However, it has to be used for COVID-related items, which absolutely can include, Ken, homeschooling and connectability with right. uh, laptops and iPads. So okay. right now, uh, you know, Casey, myself, a lot of the department heads, Carol and Trevor, are all brainstorming and ideas because the parameters are very limited in certain areas. But one of the areas that's not really limited is the school connectivity. Yep. Well, that's that's good news. I mean, the am I still audible? Can you see the yeah. screen I was yeah. trying to yeah. share? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Ken. Okay. okay. Um, that's good news. The, what the committee did last week was um, we looked to see about a $20,000 um, surplus at the end of the year or non-expenditure, I guess, out of the general fund at the end of the year. So the committee last week authorized the, the um, moving of that amount of money essentially into the school choice revolving. Uh, and we would move school choice expenditures over to the general fund so that we would have the $20,000 available to put towards this purchase. And uh, we could also use additional school choice monies if indeed the money you were just talking about, John, doesn't come through. So we can cover the expense. We just uh, we want to get the order in and we wanted to put it through. I, I apologize, Jeff, for not. I broke. I had a communication breakdown with Darius and. He thought I was sending it, and I thought he was sending no. it, so I didn't get it to you. My apologies. So I no, apologize. No, 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 no apology needed. This, it's, it's just crazy times. Everybody's scrambling at the last minute. So, and I think people just need to understand that that uh, we just need to try to work together the best we can here because uh, this is just not going to be easy for any departments in or the town. So. Uh, so, Ken, Ken, what you basically be looking for uh, from the Capital Improvement Committee is a recommendation for those purchases. That's, a, that's all we're really looking for is to have it included as part and parcel of the plan. I mean, it's an addition to the plan. But, yes, the approval from the capital planning is as part of the step towards uh, moving forward with the purchase and getting the purchase order in place. Okay. Um, now, I, I'm going to, I think I'm going to have to refer this question to Casey. Are you there? I am. I am. Now, Casey, seeing how this just came up, and we don't have it on the agenda, but we have unforeseen items as far as discussion. Is it something that we could discuss tonight as far as the Capital Improvement Committee? and vote it and have the school forward a written uh, request, a, a Apple improvement form, have them complete it and just forward it us, to us at a, you know, at a, obviously a later date tomorrow or whatever. I think you should. I think you should. Uh, I think you should. Listen, Carolyn, it's an emergency, a Board of Health emergency. Mm -hmm. Even if it isn't, even Carolyn, if it isn't, Carolyn, it's, this it's directly, this impacts, directly budgeting. impacts budgeting. Not only, not only we're finding out, we're finding out from Ken that there was a miscommunication issue. issue. So, yeah. I know, but it's so, yeah. still an emergency. So I, I, I feel like no matter what we do, it's still going to be okay, even though it's not on the I agenda. Don't I don't think many people are going to question it. I, I think it's unanticipated right. business. Absolutely, absolutely, it's unanticipated. That's, that's business. the way I look at it, Jack. It would just it would save the effort of trying to set up another conference another meeting. here, right. another <laughs> meeting right for that for that one item, and I, you know I just want to make sure that everybody, even though this is being done verbally and we don't have the written form, we know that we will be receiving the written form, and can can once again state uh, the dollar request that the school is asking for and what they plan on using it. And then we could discuss it at that point and then after discussion, vote it. 
if people felt comfortable with that, and I want to make sure all the committee members feel comfortable with that. That's capital improvement. This is Carolyn. I'm absolutely fine with that. Ken, I'm sure you're fine with that. I, I'm fine John? with it, yes. I'm, I'm okay with it. Okay. I think, I think um, it's covered in both. Uh, not expected on the agenda. And also, I think what Carolyn was uh, looking at was our bylaws say that requests have to be the CIPC before a certain date, unless there's an emergency, which like, yeah, right. as this falls under. So I think okay. we're okay ways, I guess. <clears throat> All right. Skip, you comfortable? Yeah, that sounds good to me. Was it? Yep. Jack? Yes, I'm fine. Okay. All right. Ken, now, please follow up with uh, 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 Flight yeah, 41 uh, request. Yes, you all should have. Uh, I, I emailed it about four o'clock this afternoon oh. to all the members of this committee. I'm sorry, it just, like I said, it just it was one of those things oh. between Darius and me. And I will send uh, one. Okay. Out. I, I can't remember if Casey was on that as well, but I will make sure I get one to Casey. Speaking okay. So, so, so we all, so we all, as far as the capital improvement committee, we all have our requests. In, in form here, in electronic form? Is that what you're saying, Ken? It should be in your inboxes, in your emails, yes. I, I replied okay. to... All right. I used one of your All communications right. to send it. <clears throat> okay, thank you, Ken. Ken, could you, would you mind just uh, verbally stating what you're looking for, dollar amount, and then we can open up for discussion and then see if we can move it for a vote? Sure, the, um, the down... Oh, well, oh, I went to a different, oh my gosh, I'm still sharing my screen. Sorry, folks. <laughs> You're talking to Donnie Hathaway? <laughs> it's a, Jeff, it's a, it's a request and a cost estimate of $65,500 for the purchase of uh, an additional 230, um, well, I will, for lack of a better word, use Chromebooks, but, uh, 230 yeah. devices for the Deerfield Elementary School for the 2020-21 school year. All right, for the FY2021 school year. All right. Uh, is there any discussions or any questions from uh, the committee members, capital committee members? Can I speak to the Finance Committee? Sure. Um, we'll have to... Somehow, Brenda is going to have to get this, assuming it's approved in five minutes. Brenda <laughs> has to get the number and change off the spreadsheets. Finance committee meeting on Friday. Right? Right. Yes. So, yes. So, that, uh -huh. that 65500 will have to be reflected at some point in the budget. So, who's going to take the ball on that? We'll well, I would believe that that would be up to the select board and uh, Brenda and whomever the else there. That you're utilizing. It's a grant that you're utilizing. Right. So right. It's right. grant funded. a limited scope grant. Oh, so right. grant funded? I missed that. It's going to be minimal. Yeah, that's what they were can talking go, about, John. Does that go to page? Can you scroll down to page two in that request, uh, Ken? Yeah. Uh, it won't be in page two because this was this was done without the uh, knowledge of the grant funding or the, the thought of using the grant funding. We were just looking for approval. Here's page two. All right. So I was looking to see the source being a grant, but there's nothing there. It, it's so. not there because originally the, this was just a draft that was sent to me, but um, got it started. I can have the grant added. Um, no, I just want to make sure it's not going to affect Brenda's paperwork for our Friday meeting, right? Correct. It won't. No money, no money coming out of our budget. There's no money coming out of the omnibus budget, or uh, it, the only place it would come from would be if it doesn't come out of the grant would be from school choice revolving fund at the uh, elementary school. Okay. All right. Um, so I just 
Carolyn, I just want to clarify, if, if we vote yes, and you've put the order in, Ken, um, that come out of the fiscal 20 part of the um, 444,000, Casey? Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. So yes. I would put, John and I were talking about this. We would put this through on the CARES Act uh, plan. Yes. Okay, so I would note CARES Act funding. Yes, yes. yes. Fiscal 20. Fiscal 20, because we're going to put it right through right now before. Fiscal 20 CARES Act funding. Yep. yep. Okay. Because there's fiscal, this 440, this 444,000 can go into fiscal 21, but we want to make sure whatever we're carrying right now and whatever we spend right now, we try to submit for 20. Okay. 20. We get reimbursed I mean, away. Okay. I'll, uh, I'll get in touch with Darius and see what we can get, <clears throat> how we can get this, or I'll see if I can revise this. Okay. Yeah, okay. So I, I can send it to you, Ken, if you want. If um, you can ultimately, you know, review it and let me know if you have any questions, and I'll help Casey anyway. Send me which? Uh, the actual COVID funding. Oh, okay. Yep, so you can cite it. Okay. You might, and there might be other school expenses that you can submit. I'll, uh, I'll alert Darius to that. It's good to know. All right. Is there any further discussion? Yeah, just on can the form. Can I ask for? Just on the form itself. It's got fiscal year 20 capital expenditure request form. Yeah, it will uh, be. It will be changed to fiscal year 20. It, right now it reads 21. Yep. But I am uh, now changing it to 20. <laughs> so this won't be, how does this get voted by the taxpayers then? It doesn't. It doesn't. It's an emergency, John. Okay. And it's yeah, not, uh, uh, we're not. And, and the select board can spend the grant. Yes. So. Correct. I, I just think that with a dollar amount, we're just looking for the blessing of the capital improvement committee. Right. Right. Okay. So do I have a, is there any further discussion? Do I have a, do I have a motion? I would move to uh, approve the request from the Deerfield Elementary School for a $65,500 uh, spending of grant, a CARES Act grant funding from 2000, fiscal 2020. And I will second that. This is Carolyn. Okay, so the motion has been right. made. Yeah, has been seconded. Is there any further discussion? Okay, let's vote it. Ken, you want to start? Ken, yes. John Pareski, yes. Jack Davy, yes. Skip Sobieski, yes. Carolyn, yes. And Jeff Austin, yes. So that's a six zero zero vote. And thank you all very much. I um, well, I'm thank so you. I'm sorry that I had the miscommunication and had to <laughs> disrupt your uh, agenda this evening. So thank you very much, everyone. <laughs> I'm going to well, stop yeah. sharing the document for now. <laughs> okay. All right, uh, Chief. I just wanted to thank you very much. Uh, for your input tonight as far as the capital improvement uh, issues here. And so for us, as far as capital improvement, uh, as I said, I think we can wait on the capital plan until we get into the budget process. So at the moment, I will uh, turn this back over to Trevor. Okay. And I, well, thank, you and I thank you very much. Yeah, thank you and, and your board for, for doing that, that work quickly and unanticipated. Bye, John. Really important. Thanks, John. Yeah, thank you, John. Um, so, so we're looking at um, 
So ne the next item would be the town meeting and election update. So I, I just uh, I can get into budget, which is a little further down on the line. But do, do we want to hit anything on the town meeting first, Casey? That you wanted to talk about or um, of the election update? I mean, really. Oh, go ahead. We are finalizing our plan for that. I have a meeting tomorrow at eight thirty with a, a whole host of people. Dan and, and several people from the school, John Pachurk, Jr., Kevin, because we have to work out the access. Casey, we can't hear you. Oh, crap. I You're can, I, you. I can hear me, but you guys can. You guys can. Yeah, now yeah. I can. Oh, now we can. So we're finalizing, so we're finalizing that, plan that plan tomorrow. I have an 830 and meeting, I and I hope to have the major points, the major points of the plan ready for the select board tomorrow night. Um, it's very um, busy. It's very busy. Uh, lots of moving parts here. Yep, there is. So the, the plan is to still move forward with a uh, June 1st um, yes. Yes. town meeting yes. and uh, June 8th town election. And I'm um, so proud of the work that the um, clerk's office, Barbara and the, um, Jen and Sarah have been doing, um, taking in all the applications for um mail-in absentee ballots and getting those you know ballots out to people they have been working really hard on that and a lot of information coming we're getting a huge um people looking for for absentee ballots and i can't thank the public enough for that because that really you know that reduces that's one less person that's got to walk through here um on, on at the polls you know we are required by bylaw to have a um a poll open and and it, we can't because of our bylaw we can't reduce the time a lot of towns don't have bylaws so they can reduce the time that polls are open to four hours 12 to four or something like that to um to make sure that the poll workers are safe and employees are safe here but we don't have that ability so we're just really encouraging everybody to ask for an absentee ballot fill it out drop it off at the box here or mail it back in to support the post office and um so we'll, we'll, I think we'll be in good shape. A lot of people turning up are ready for that. So, um, and then and then Barb is working on plans. We have you know plexiglass knee shields on order. We've got you know a layout all set up um, to try and limit who come, you know how many people are in the building. The flow is going to be different than anybody has ever had. Again, we just really encourage absentee ballot. But if you have to come, you know you're going to may end up waiting in line, and um, we're we're going to just try and make it as safe as possible for the people who are working um, and, and people who are coming to vote. So, um, and then town meeting, Casey and, and, and everybody has been working on that. That's been a real struggle trying to get that all figured out. Um, and we'll go over the warrant tonight. We've got to kind of try to pair that back where we can. And um, <clears throat> so I, I could hit on budget if you want. We've got a question from John. Go ahead. So where, where are the meetings going to be? Uh, the, oh, the, meeting. The annual town meeting we are planning for the frontier parking lot, and that would be the. And this may change based on tomorrow's meeting, but what we have, you know, 90% figured out is that um, select board finance committee will be up on the the in front of the the meeting will be held in front of the middle school wing, so you'll still have the plenty of parking for everybody in the main big parking lot. But we'll rope that off with the help of the police and all, and we will rope off that whole parking lot in front of the middle school and cafeteria wing out towards the um, tennis court. So that whole area, people will be able to bring a chair marked off. They can sit safely six feet apart from each other. And the finance and select board will, and town moderator and lawyers will, as we normally are in the front of the room, up on that sidewalk, that, eight, that um, cement area. And we'll have a PA and speakers and uh, SCAT will be, have, you know, mobile mics like we normally do for, for talking, but it'll be a slower process because we'll, you know, disinfect the mic each time. And we really are trying to limit this. And, tr and that's why the meeting tonight is to try and get through the budget so we can all provide a united front to get out that meeting um, fast. So we really, you know, we want everybody to have their time and, and it's a, you know, democratic process, but for the safety of everybody, we really want to do this quick. Uh, Casey? And so, if we do have changes, we will inform everyone. But the major problem that the moderator has is how long the warrant is. So we're doing our best to streamline things. 
and we'll go over that tonight. So you guys get a look at that warrant and, and talk about how we can kind of pair that back. Because a lot, you know, we said, oh, we'll just do financial stuff. Well, <laughs> everything's financial just about. So we'll, we'll go through that a little later. Um, but I wanted to um, hit on the budget and tell you where we are, wh where all the work that um, Brenda and every department head and uh, Casey and Jen, everybody's been doing to try and get us um, some budget that we could go forward with and feel comfortable with. Um, nobody will, not everybody will be comfortable. We're not going to be comfortable, but we're, we're going to be as comfortable as we can, not, you know, not having a crystal ball to know what the state's going to do as far as revenues go. Um, uh, Brenda, and I'll, I'll definitely reach out to Brenda for a lot of this, but um, last time we met was towards um, mid-March or something, uh, maybe towards the end of March, right when this COVID thing was hitting. It was our last kind of meeting. It was before you know, we kind of shut down town hall and we had a, we had a pretty good budget, but we were, we all had, um, a, um, idea that we wanted, we, we felt comfortable going into next year, rolling over about 300,000 in free cash. Um, and we weren't quite there yet. And we were reaching out to the school for help. And we said, you know, if, if the school could come up with 30,000 at frontier and maybe 30,000 to elementary, and then we could come up with 30,000 that we would cut we would get there. We'd, we'd be okay. And then the next day, you know, everything hit. And um, that's when uh, Brenda took a look at that budget and started slashing revenue projections and looking at uh, reaching out to all the department heads and saying, how do we cut this down? We don't know. You know, we, we were got down to the point where we were, we were going to have maybe less than a hundred thousand in free cash, maybe down to nothing we had going forward. And then, um, and weekly, daily, hourly, everybody's been working on each budget to try and trim back everything we could while still moving forward with a responsible way to run the town and, and, and be able to act nimbly on projects that'll be coming forward. Um, grant opportunities, you know, if there's a stimulus uh, program that comes out, we need to be nimble to be able to get that done. So there's a lot of engineering work that we still wanna get done so we can take advantage of projects in the future. So, um, I, and and the schools did an amazing thing. They, they they were able to come. Frontier first led the way with a um, with a level funded budget. Um, they were able to do that a variety of different ways using you know E and D um, and I'm not sure exactly how Frontier did it. I can tell you how the elementary school budget um, did it. We all met and and Darius um, and Shelley they they worked really hard as well to look at ways to kind of trim their budget. To, um, to buy, provide a level funded budget on their end. And they, in the elementary school, um, we have a kindergarten teacher that's retiring and we do have um, an aide that would go with that. And we think that we could get away with two kindergartens next year um, based on the enrollment that we have now. But that enrollment always kind of explodes over the summer. So we may wind up having to have three kindergartens at the end, but we thought uh, that we would fund that out of school choice. Luckily, the Deerfield Elementary has been very responsible and, and we're very you know, attractive schools, so we do have a healthy school choice account. Um, so we can uh, play with those numbers and, and be able to, um, to provide a balanced budget for this year and, uh, and go forward. So those, those two schools um, gave us about almost 300, I mean, our friend could know the number right off the head, but it's about $300,000. So that's um, you know, we were going forward with about 100,000. All of a sudden, we're, we're up at about 400,000 um, of free cash going forward. So everybody's just been, been working on this to try and make sure that we're comfortable with the free cash going forward and that we're reducing our revenues as best we can. I don't want to talk forever, but I think we're going to, what I, what I, kind of what I got at, we just had a finance committee. I sat in on a finance committee meeting that was at 4.30. Um, and there was just, you know, it's a lot of apprehension because, you um, they obviously haven't been running these numbers uh, as we all have. And um, the last time they met, you know, they were recommending things that we're now, you know, adjusting. So they just didn't have enough time to go through each one. So they set a meeting for uh, Friday afternoon to go through each line item and make sure that they're comfortable with it. But I thought I would just talk today and you, with Brenda each line item as we go through, because I think it's important that people understand where we were and where we are now. 
now and how we got there and why we think we're comfortable with this budget. Um, and I know that the urge to do a level funded budget, it's a lot harder in a town to do that. And especially in a town with the amount of things that are changing. Um, this, this year is going to be, FY21 is going to be so different than we've ever had. Um, we have way more expense in telecommunication and uh, th those, uh, uh, you know, the, the equipment to make sure that happens and the, the software programs to make sure that happens. So it, you can't really just budget. And we even before all this, we had these expenses with the, um, the transfer station, the cost of recycling. And so it's very hard to do just a level fund because you've got so many changes that change from year to year. So we're trying to steal money from accounts that we can um, and, and kind of shift to what like, other accounts are going to be more just because we have other expenses. So, um, Brenda, do you want to say a few things before we go into that line by line? Um, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, yes. good. Uh, n no, not at this point, but I think as we go through, if you want more detail, I'd be happy to, to um, speak to that or if there's any questions. Okay. Is it okay if I go line by line? And uh, so I'm using, I don't, I can't, I mean, some of you can see my screen, but I'm just using the budget expense sheet that everybody's kind of familiar with, with Brenda and she, you know, it's green and some pink, but mostly gray. It shows a few years back. Um, so, and it, and it goes down the 100 series, the general government, and I'll just, I'll just kind of go through this fairly quickly because it take a while, but, um, but I just think it's important to be where we're at. So there's a lot of things like the moderator, $400, that doesn't change. It's been that way, you know, for the last few years and um, no discussion on that. Um, select board salaries, that's still 16,000. That's what it was, that's what it is, that's what it has been. A select board staff okay, salary, Trevor. oh, go ahead. Trevor, this is Julie Chalfant. I just wanna make a quick statement from a finance committee perspective for those who aren't on the finance committee. The finance committee column does not agree with the um, requested column on a number of them, and many of them are just because we haven't had a chance to revisit it. So there's no, um, it, it's not a documented disagreement yet. The finance committee hasn't decided on a lot of Good that. point. Good point. That's a great point. Thank yeah. you, Julie. Thank you. Really, um, yeah, I didn't really uh, flush that out. So, um, right, and, and really that recommended column that everybody has was kind of where we were um, and what the, they had budgeted before this thing hit. So this was pre-COVID shut down and kind of everything left where it was. So the requested amount, the FY21 requested amount is um, the budget that the select board and, and the um, accountant and town administrator are, are, are requesting to go forward because we think that this is a, a, a balanced, you know, a balanced budget that we think um, is smart moving forward for the town. And then as, as the finance committee has a chance to meet and vote those, I assume they'll they'll either disagree with it or they'll kind of bring, th their numbers are much higher because we had cut them. So they'll probably come back to ours or they'll make a different decision, but they'll do that at, at, a, at a future meeting. So um, so really the select board staff salaries, um, we're requesting $219,410, uh, $219, which is a bit of a reduction, about $11,432. This, this budget has gone up and down over the years, um, and it, it went up quite a bit yesterday. And what that, if you look at 2020 appropriated, that's 230,000. We're asking for less this year. In the beginning of FY20, that number was probably around 200,000. And that was, uh, and then we had a special town meeting late in the fall, and I had asked the taxpayers to allow us to increase that because I knew that we would be hiring on a very qualified assistant town administrator. We needed to fund for that. And then I also requested some money for um, a separate um, part-time person. And we weren't, I wasn't sure at that time how we would use that position, but there was a lot of um, back and forth between the building department and us and, you know, the money towards helping uh, uh, Kevin. So th there was just a lot of movement. We didn't really know where we were going to be at. And I said, if I don't use it, we'll roll it back at the end of the year, which we will. And then going forward, I feel really comfortable with the staff we have. We now have Casey. We now have Jennifer. Um, and we have Pat. So we have a really strong team moving forward. I didn't see the need right now to hang on to that $11,000. Um, and I thought, you know, this is, 
you know, we could use it for sure. I mean, there's, there's minutes that need to be done from last year. There's a bunch of work, but we think we can get by with what we have. And um, so that's why we're requesting, which looks like less than FY20. It is a little more than the beginning, but I hope that explains kind of where that, where that wound up. That's the budget that um, I think that's the only one the finance committee committee had held off on because we were, there was a lot of, um, um, we were, we were in flux on that for a little bit. So I think that's just why they hadn't budgeted that yet. They're still going to decide that. Um, everything else, um, again, is, is pretty, pretty straightforward. The select board administrator expense is the same. Uh, finance committee is the same. Um, the accountant salary is the same. The accountant expense has, uh, is down a bit from what they had. Um, it's up a little bit because of, I think, um, a couple of the needs that Brenda had. You could probably speak to that, but it's, it's it, less. And it, it mainly an increase in the audit expense. Um, That's right. Go, going That's forward right. with the $19 million project we have for the wastewater treatment plant, uh, there yep. will be an additional audit that has to be done, a single audit. And um, a portion of that is in this budget, and the rest of it is in the wastewater treatment plant budget for that additional cost. So that's kind of where we ended up there. The assessor salaries is um, the same at 11,000. The um, assessor's administrative assistant um, salary is just uh, is the same as as you know voted, um, and then that's just the one one I think person there. Um, the uh, assessor's expense is um, is a little less uh, than each year, um, and then the uh, quintennial certification that we, we kind of put that forward every year, and I think it looks like they dropped back uh, a little bit. They were able to pull twenty five hundred bucks out of that um, this year. Um, the clerk, treasurer, collector salaries have adjusted, and that's really that had to do with um, you know. Uh, Gen, people moving up and adjusting and Jen filling in for, um, I know we talked about this at personnel board and, uh, and other things and maybe other finance committee meetings, but Jen stepped up really, really big when um, Sarah was, um, was out on maternity leave and, and then she's moving forward at that, at that rate. So um, let's see, the treasurer's collector expense has increased and that's, that's again because of, uh, help me with that, Brenda, that was, um, the, the, actua the cost of the actuarial, which is required every two years. Yes, and I think so on. So you'll see it was in the it was in the fiscal 19 budget. Now it's now it's in the fiscal um, 21 budget. And, and, I, and I, go ahead. Can we uh, put that out for bid, Brenda. I I don't believe so. Parker Elmore, I believe, has been doing it, but I, I I'm not the one to ask. And who do we ask? I mean, to me, I think it would be fruit to put it out to bid every so often to keep the people that are doing at an honest price. Makes sense. John, can I, John, can I speak to that? Sure. Um, actually, Parker Elmore's price is very reasonable. I had done a bid in Asheville before I came here, and this price is actually better than what we were paying in Asheville. Yeah, but I just wonder if there's another firm that might do less. So, there's, I'm a, I'm a, there's, a, there's, a, there's at least two others, but I don't have access to the names right now. I mean, we could do it, but Brenda is this the next actuarial study? Pardon? Is this the next round of an actuarial study? Yeah, this is, this is uh, we have to do this every two years, so this is in the budget for fiscal 21 to do. Maybe for the next time, not this one, but yeah. two years from now. Some will think about. Yeah, uh, yeah definitely. I had the same, I, John, excuse me, but I, I had the same question on legal expenses, too. Uh, you know, have we shopped that around a little bit with town council or? Not this year. Before, the year before we did, Jeff. Okay, I just I just think it's a good idea. Just a, a little bit of a check and balance thing. Yeah. Yep. Keep them honest. So um, again, the legal expense is up about four thousand over last year. We we have a lot going on, um, and um, so if, if anything, we'll ask for a transfer. A reserve transfer, but I think um, 
there, there's an immense amount of work happening right now. We need we need that for sure for the budget. Um, we've looked at that hard a bunch of times. So the um, personnel board is 500. The um, IT hardware um, we dropped that back a thousand. We you know we've been spending a ton on IT stuff recently. Um, but anything we I guess we could roll into COVID we would. But I, I don't think this is part of that. But um, maybe we could look at that again. But I think that's kind of where we're at for IT hardware. Um, it was, you know, I guess you quoted six, we dropped it back a thousand there. Um, the peg access uh, capital is a, I think that's just a rollover. Is that right, Brenda? Yes, that's, that's money that we would be receiving or we have already received this fiscal year for yep. specifically for their use for capital. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, can I just ask, were we, did, where was that legislation, federal legislation? Were we going to get FCAP money again, Brenda? Do you think? I don't know. Okay. I, I honestly, I'm not, not familiar track with of it. how that's working. Yeah, after we wrote a couple letters, I lost track of it. So, I mean, so much has been going on. So, I, w I would guess it's fine just to leave it. And then, obviously, if we don't get. We don't get money. Yeah. Um, well, it, it, Carolyn, this is money we've already received. So yeah. it goes into the next budget for them to use. And I right. and I believe there might be one more year left on that contract. Okay. Right. Yeah. All right. So contracted services has um, has gone up. There's there's a lot. I think Brenda could speak to this, and and certainly. Um, this is a budget that Casey has worked on hard as well. And we have a lot of projects that we're working on, and, and this is kind of where you need that that consulting and, and, and those kind of things to, to take advantage of the grant. Um, we have a lot of grant money coming in, and, and it requires assistance to do that. So um, if you don't have the money to spend, this is one of those areas where I said you have to be nimble and, and, and spend a little money to get a whole bunch of money. So, um, well, it looks like it has increased, but does anybody want to speak to that? That's not a, a line item other than you know, what I just said that I know a lot about. Hey, Anybody Brenda? have any questions? Um, so uh, this does, this budget does have an awful lot in it. Um, so one of the items that uh, was increased was um, money for Chris Curtis to work on the next round of grants yeah. for the MVP. Um, we changed, uh, Companies, uh, we, we stopped using Verizon for our phone service. We're now using Comcast for everything, and, and in doing so, that, that increased our cost. Um, we uh, went from using uh, GoDaddy for our email service and, and uh, switched over to Office 365, which has a great deal more security, and so the cost of that is higher. Um, we have now taken on um, the cost of all of these remote meetings, and so uh, there's an increase in, in the budget for that. Um, there was a decrease in the budget for several things. Uh, we, we moved some of the copiers into individual budgets, moved the cost of that out of this, this budget. Um, let's see what else. Um, we put in, into this budget the cost for a compensation, classification compensation study. Now, we put the cost into this budget. I know Casey has a lead on a really good grant that we can use towards that, but we have no guarantees. So that is in this budget as well. And, I, and that really, that's the main increase in, the, in this budget is for that. John had a question. Go ahead, John. Yes. Um, the, the cost of these meetings, Shouldn't that go to the COVID expense? Well, some you uh, can. Casey, Casey, you want to speak to that? Yes, we're hoping that some of the costs can go to that. But we have to come up but, with a plan and stretch it out into 21. So yeah, that's and initially it wasn't uh, something that we could put yes. towards COVID. And, and now they're opening that up a little bit more, correct? Yes. Expensive. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, these meetings, we've been looking around and pricing, you know, Zoom or this platform or, mm -hmm. you know, Google Meet. There's a lot of different ones, you know, that people are using. And I can't be believe how expensive it is. And because, you know, we figure, oh, there's 12 people on the meeting. But, no, you've got to make sure that, 
3,000 people can get on if they want to. Yeah, no, I'm not doubt it. That's, yeah, I'm not, I just, if we could, yeah, if we could, if we we'll could move take that. take it off the regular budget and move it to the COVID, that's all. We'd love that, yeah, for sure. Um, but def definitely this will be the, the norm going forward for a while. Um, so town clerk expense um, is, is reduced about $1,364 you know, over last year. Um, Conservation Commission is 800 Again, they don't really ever spend much. Uh, open Space Committee is 250 and not ever really used much. Um, planning Board, um, we did reduce that about um, uh, $1,500. Um, they had approved um, 8000 I think we have dropped, talked about you know using 8000 that, That's what the finance committee looked at. But then we thought we could bring that down a little bit further. So that's around 7000 right now. Um, and zoning board of appeals is a it's a thousand dollars uh agriculture 100 again never really used um energy committee is a thousand dollars a lot of times that you know pays for just mailings and that kind of thing and any associations but um uh and then town building maintenance is um we, we've brought um about nine thousand dollars out of that um and, you know, i'm always very concerned about that because we have a very old building there's you know lights going all the time there's just an immense amount of work that needs to happen on this building but you know this is the year that we need to pull back so we, we, we pull back um and that you know that was approved by the um finance committee as well um town office expense um we brought that way back as well um and i'm not sure so, if some of that somewhere else you yeah no it, it is so when we got rid of verizon verizon costs used to be in town office expense Okay. But we had Comcast in contracted services, so the additional cost of Comcast is in contracted services. The reduction is in yep. office, uh, town office expense. Okay, thank you. And then gen general insurance, um, I guess it looks like we brought that back from the 61000 we had budgeted last year to about $55,000. Um, and that, um, <clears throat> I guess that was approved as well. So that does the general government and we're hoping the finance you know committee will go through those as well and, and, and make recommendations when they meet again um the next page is public safety um uh, which is 200 series that that would be the police payroll um uh which has been let's see is is well, i guess it looks like we have gone up a little bit over last year but um it, it's less than what was recommended it looks right. like right uh, john john was able to find some some uh some Maybe. room in there that he could give some back in yep. in our try in our attempt to try to reduce budgets. Yeah. Okay. So that that that'll you know finance committee will find that a little less than what they had approved. Um, and then payroll department expenses is at one ten uh, to one hundred and ten three hundred. Again, that was the same. Uh, they did pull uh, some money out of the uh, cruiser about. Um, Two thousand five hundred dollars, and I think that was going to come from a grant program or something. Was we're moving? Yeah, that money actually, five thousand. They had budgeted five thousand uh, additional five thousand, and uh, right. John Don was pretty sure he was going to get the grant for that. Okay, great. So that did that did come down from their last their last meeting. Um, yeah. And then inspections department payroll kind of came down a slight amount. Um, so um, we we were able with the inspections department. I actually went went back and did an analysis of what we've been spending on the uh, part-time inspectors and how much yeah. how many hours they've been putting into the projects okay. and felt that uh, we could make some savings there. So um, that was something that Bob and I looked at and he agreed to. Yeah. And we now have um, you know full full-time person in there who works out of that office now and doing a great job. Um, I have a so about the is that pretty much covered by um, fees? Yes. Oh, yes. And, and then some. some. And then some. Yep. Yep. Um, yeah, we'll pull that in into revenue. Um, and the inspection uh, department. Oh, go ahead. Yep. Another question. I think it was background noise. Get voice feedback. Okay. Um, so the inspections department expense. Um, is um, $4,750, the emergency management $2,800, and um, the uh, canine control um, is uh, 19, that's our portion of the um, 
at least two towns. I don't know if that's three towns. Maybe Brenda can speak to that. I know it's Greenfield and us, and I don't know if that's Montague as well. And Montague, yes. Mont yep. So that's our, our share of that. Um, so that went up just slightly. So that that's really the 200 series. And then uh, education, um, these were, um, so we have the Deerfield Elementary School. Um, as you can see, this is, um, this is about about a balanced budget from from uh, last year. It is, yeah, it's just um, well, nine bucks less than yeah, last year. Yeah, I, you know um, what? I, I put in exactly what they had for last year, and then Casey yeah. forwarded their actual revision today, and it was okay. nine dollars less. So okay. <laughs> I made the Great. adjustment. We'll take it. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then the Frontier Regional School as as well. Um, now that they did a level funded budget, but but because of you know how things work and and the percentages of, of students that go there, uh, our percentage this year is just more. Uh, so I think that's why you'll see about about a forty thousand dollar increase just because of um, you know the the percentage rate that Deerfield pays versus the other four three towns. Um, and then Frontier Transportation is. Um, Regional transportation is uh, is down, but that was that was known back in March, anyways. Um, and then Franklin Tech assessment was also known. Any other questions on that, John? Did you have anything? What happened to the transportation? What uh, happened to it? Yeah. Well, uh, well no. nobody being. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, we we had. Uh, I talked to Darius about this, and Ken could could back me up on this. They. Um, they did go in and try and negotiate, uh, you know, a price, but really there was some fuel savings costs because they also, like everybody, has been trying to keep everybody employed and not laid off. So they're still paying their drivers um, the, the amount mm -hmm. of time that would normally drive, you know, so and that's most of your cost really is the salary. Yeah. So there really wasn't a ton of savings. Do I have that right, Ken? Oh, he's muted. I think you're muted, Ken. You can hear me. You're muted. Yep. <laughs> so, there you go. I'm sorry. Uh, that is correct. We we had conversations back and forth with uh, Gridco Transportation, and um, their salaries account for a, a significant chunk. Um, I think we realized in Deerfield about an eighteen thousand um, dollar fuel adjustment. Um, yeah. That was negotiated, but uh, most everything else is pretty much built into their their overhead costs and expenses. Yeah. And even though the buses aren't on the road, they still have a tremendous not a tremendous amount, but they still have maintenance that they have to do regularly on the buses. So um, it was a it was a, an educational experience, but <clears throat> that's where we're standing. No pun intended. No pun intended. <laughs> So, um, and then we had the, the uh, we had the Franklin County Tech Assessment, which was the same, and then and the also the capital, which they've been working on, um, which is it's dropping, I guess, because we it was a little less than last year, three thousand one hundred sixty four dollars. Uh, the, the, the Franklin County, uh, the Franklin Assessment, what do they get any pressure to keep a lower budget? Um, hey, hey, let's, let's assess the town. You'll pay it. Um, I think they they try to do a pretty good job, uh, but uh, but I you know I would recommend just here while people are listening that I know that the there's going to need to be new representation on that uh, school committee board. So if anybody out there or any member wants to get on the Franklin County uh, School Committee board, I know the member who um, I had asked so to uh, represent us is moving, I think, uh, next year. So he's not going to be able to um, represent Deerfield. And it'd be good to have us represented there. So if anybody's interested. And is our assessment enrollment-based or strictly? It's enrollment-based. Yeah. That, you know, that, that can dial into it, John. That's. Um, yeah, right. Right. That's <laughs> true. So I just thought Do I would. Do we have the enrollment that. numbers real handy? <laughs> I don't. This year, last year, no, or this but I'll, year? I'll look for them. No, that's okay. Never mind. Okay. So I know. I know. I looked at it when they sent us the budget, and it was obvious why why our our costs had gone up. But okay, thank you. 
also um, general highway uh, pace. So that was the MK3 series, 400, uh, 400 series of public works. And um, we have the general highway payroll, um, which is, is uh, less than um, what was recommended by the finance committee. They were able to find some savings. Because it is more than, than last year. Um, and then uh, the general highway expense, um, I guess, was the same. Um, and then, you know, we always do the winter snow and ice removal. Um, the street lighting is the same. Um, the transfer station expense um, has gone up considerably because, you know, there's just the, the cost of everything in the recycling program. That whole market is tanked, and uh, with China not getting anything, uh, we have a lot more expense there. So um, that is really hard to keep keep the same and and also um, when you look at revenue size we have not collected no, normally in May we're doing stickers all month and we're selling bags all month and we're taking in a bunch of revenue this year um, that's all going to kind of roll into next year because we've held off um, or help and collect boards held off you know selling stickers we, we let them um, still be good until the end of August so through July after July 1st that all that money will then go into next year's budget you know or revenue um, so, uh, let's see. And, and then test well monitoring, um, we did bring that down, uh, another $10,000. We thought we'd be able to, um, you know, to do that, uh, to bring it back down. So that, that's pretty low as far as, you know, that goes back, that's lower than we were back in 2016. So, um, hopefully we're okay there, but I think Kevin and Brenda, do you want to speak to that, Brenda? Do you, we, we brought 10,000 out of it. Yeah, Kevin Kevin um, felt that if we didn't have to replace any wells, that with the current company, the 40000 would be sufficient. Okay, okay. So but we'll if he does, in fact, have to replace wells at any one point in time, then we'll have to look at a transfer. Okay, okay. So that sounds good. So that's, um, so that's that sheet. Um, 500 series is the uh, human services and uh, Florida Health salary. Um, that is um, just a you know straight salary is just up a little bit. The uh, board of health expense we've uh, we had brought down over last year um, about almost six and a half uh, thousand, and that was again known back um, back in March. Um, we did have an emergency COVID expense. This was the eighty five hundred dollars, but. Um, is this uh, do I have this right, Casey? When we were going to raise that up. Or is that is that a different item? The emergency COVID expense? Yeah. So what we need to do is we need to raise the deficit, the approved deficit spending amount from twenty five thousand to one fifty. Oh, okay. So that's different oh, yeah, than that's, what we, that's different. That's the request. That's different. Okay. Thank yeah, you. that's right. that's the actual what do we have to yeah. keep in the budget in right. case this is long term. And, and and hopefully, yeah, we'll get reimbursed for anything we spent. But um, but yeah, we did have to put them in there. So that that's obviously new over last. Year. I, I think what we what we did with that, just so everybody knows, I think the finance committee was aware because they yeah. were the ones that suggested it. We had some items in the in the board of health expense budget that um, they felt. Um, might not be necessary and they moved the money from that into the COVID expense just to have something in there. That's um, right. I, you know, who knows, who knows where, where that's going to be next year. But, um, but it was, it was something that they did. And I believe the select board agreed to that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. We felt that was accurate. Well, we didn't, number one, we didn't know how long this was going on initially. But also, we had no idea what kind of support we were going to get, um, yep. even yep. though we felt we were going to get something. So the idea was to just to move ahead as much as we, you know, we could at the time. Yep. What so, is, go ahead, John. COVID expense. What, what, I can hear you. Broke up for a second. Can you repeat that? What is emergency COVID expense? Anything that has that we have incurred a cost for that we can attribute to to this uh, pandemic. So, okay, you know, like the meetings, like I discussed earlier. Yeah, me... exactly. Yes, yeah, no. we were sure when we when we first did this, you know, was this going to be a couple of weeks or what are we going to have for expense? And we thought, 
I think you all thought too is let's move some out of our, our budget, put it here so we can account for it. And then maybe have an account that we could then deficit spend and then get the money back, you know, once we applied for FEMA and, and now the CARES Act. So how do you um, how do you deficit spend? It's a budget. Like, like snow and ice, you can you're allowed to deficit spend an emergency account. The, that was a, a law. Okay. All right. Okay. Yep. Remember, Jay, we, we declared an emergency on March 10th at a meeting, and um, and then applied. Brenda uh, um, applied to the you know sent the information to DOR so that and we had to just pick a number. We just picked a number 25,000. I mean, we had no idea, and and. You know, it said that we were going to, um, you know, we wanted the authority to deficit spend. Right. Okay. Thank I, you. I think Trevor signed that letter and Casey, Casey actually put it together. Yeah. So we're going to, yep. So, um, so that was that. Um, and then so maybe we, we, we get reimbursed all of this next year. We may, you know, but we do need to have some money in there. Uh, in in that account, right? Am I am I correct on that? Because there there'll probably be there may be some expenses that we don't get covered for fully, so we have to have correct. Yeah. Um, there are some expenses that aren't covered or may not be covered. So what we were trying to do was make sure that we had some funds set aside to to allow us to meet the needs of the COVID-19 situation. And this was also before the CARES Act went into effect. This was two tranches ago yeah. when we first created this account. Yes. But there are things, as we learn more about the CARES Act, there are things that we can't cover. Right. So hopefully- Through that account. Hopefully we'll get most of it back. Um, so council right. on eight, go ahead, John. Um, Brenda, then shouldn't that be in your revenue? Also? No. No. But we're going to get it back. You don't know that yet. It would, it would be. We're not guaranteed. going to be conservative and not put it in. If, if in fact, we get to the end of the fiscal year, John, at least for this fiscal year, and we have money that um, we've requested reimbursement for from, from the CARES Act or whatever, and we haven't gotten it yet, then I would move that money into a special revenue fund uh, waiting for the reimbursement. Okay. And I would right. assume it would work the same way when we do it in fiscal 21. Okay. Thank you. I don't want to beat it to death. Thank you. Nope. Okay. That's fine. Great. Um, so the answer and, and, and get the questions asked. So um, Council on Aging is, is $500. We, we've, um, you can see that that is up, but we, we have um, reinstituted our Council on Aging and, and um, everybody's really working hard with the seniors and, you know, food programs and reaching out to people and, um, they're doing some great work. So this is um, a small amount of money to, to get them back up and running. Um, and then the senior center expense, um, that, that, you know, again, that was up from, uh, from last year, just with the amount of uh, different things that we had adjusted. Um, I'm trying to go back in memory on all the things that we went through. There was a lot of things that weren't accounted for. Um, that's a that's a completely different meeting. Maybe I'll come back to you on that. There's there's a lot of change there. Um, there. There was, and and even but even after the finance committee had approved her budget, um, I asked her to go back and see if there was anything she could cut, and she did yeah. reluctantly um, find some things that that maybe she could she could uh, use out of the gift fund instead of out of her budget. So that was yeah. that was um, how we worked that. And we'll look at that hard at, at all year long too. I mean, even though we're budgeting this, budgeting this, um, planning on, hey, maybe we can open back up again. If we don't open all year long, there's obviously there'll be some savings there. Um, other than, you know, we have a lot of, you know, we have to pay the pay the people that are working because uh, they're still working, you know, constantly. But um, there might be other areas that we could we could not spend and roll roll towards money next year um, in the free cash. So. Um, Let's see, Veterans District Assessment. Um, I get, that's just a straight assessment, right, that we get. So I don't really have much say over that. And Veterans Benefit, um, you did reduce that uh, over last year, um, but I guess that stayed the same based on the Finance Committee's recommendation. Um, ADA Coordinator, 
So that's uh, Human Services, Cultural and Recreation, the Tilton Library um, is, uh, they, they pulled some money out based on, uh, you know, from, from that March meeting, Finance Committee, they, they pulled some money back out of that. Um, the summer they did. They, they actually, um, the library agreed to, to reduce the hours that they are normally open. Okay, um, thank you. No, I don't think tremendously, but enough that 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 was that was what affected the budget when she went back and looked at things. Okay. Um, and the summer um, the summer swim program, um, you we had cut a lot out of that. I think that was a recommendation from Skip as well, right? Yes. Yes, that was a recommendation from Skip on Friday, and I went back and I looked and I thought, okay, we're not having a swim program this year. We're not having Tri Town Beach this year. Now that doesn't mean all the expenses go away. There's still insurance to pay. There's still maintenance, so on and so forth. Plus, if they decide to open up in the summer of 2021, they will be open partly in June, and we'll have some expenses uh, for the opening. So. I did leave a, leave a little bit in there, but I took a lot out um, in the hopes of trying to save some money. Yep. Thank you for that. That was a good good aspect on that. Um, and the department director salary stays, you know, the same. The uh, historical commission is the same. Um, and the Veterans Memorial Day event um, is also uh, the same. And and then maybe you could speak to the debt service and maturing debt, interest on maturing debt, interest on temporary loan kind of. Yeah, so, so um, in the maturing debt, um, I'll just do a, a quick little synopsis so that, so that the finance committee remembers. We had agreed that we would pay um, 200000 down on the clarifier project, so 50000 of that would be in our general fund budget the rest of it in wastewater treatment. And we had also agreed that we would have to pay that first 250,000 that we told USDA we would pay on the, um, the phase one upgrade. And right. so that was 62,500 um, for debt, uh, additional debt in the general fund. So that's why our debt went up, but of course the finance committee approved that. But the interest on maturing debt, uh, you know, we had we had thrown in numbers based on last year's interest rates, and when Barbara went back to um, renew uh, the the school roof loan and the um, the purchase uh, when we purchased back the uh, Oxford property, we took out a loan. When she went to renew those in April, the interest was quite a bit less. And then um, today, I did another adjustment based on what we think we're gonna take out for debt um, in June for both of those wastewater treatment plant projects, um, I reduced what, what I felt we would be paying in interest. It's probably not even, it's, it's probably not low enough yet, but I didn't wanna take it down too low. So I moved some money out of there. Okay, thank you. Um, and that you know, interest on temporary loans is obviously to cover um, to cover that stuff, which you have not. Uh, the finance committee hasn't reviewed yet, hasn't seen. Right. So for those projects, and, and that um, was that was my fault. Uh, I've I completely passed over it when we were doing our finance committee meetings. Yep. Okay. And then uh, so moving over to the 800 and 900 series, which is the intergovernmental government benefit. So the FERCOG core assessment. Um, is just 467 bucks more um unfunded sick leave um we did increase that and um do you want to speak to that brenda we do have you know some retirement and different things well, that yes we we have we have um one person retiring from the police department and i believe he's retiring in june at the end of june yes but so that'll affect this year but uh, we do have someone retiring from the highway department in uh, I, sometime in fiscal 21. Mm -hmm. And we did a quick analysis of what we would be uh, possibly paying out to him. And the 15,000 should cover that and have a little bit extra. And, um, 
in the Franklin uh, County Regional Retirement. Um, always creeps up. You know that you can't change. Um, right. And then uh, workers' comp, um, we did reduce. Um, yeah, yeah. We, we, we actually received an estimate from Maya on what our workers' comp would be for fiscal 21, and it was um, lower than what we had budgeted. We're a little confused, but I took a little, uh, I shaved some off. Uh, I didn't come down to exactly what they were thinking, but I, I was somewhere in between. <laughs> Good. What and that allows us to do is make an adjustment if we have, because we do an annual audit every year. They audit our workers' comp, and they may give us an increase at the beginning of the next fiscal year that we don't know about. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and then unemployment insurance, you know, we, we did increase that um, 10000 I think, right? Because um, yes. we, you know, with, with all that was going on, we, we may have, we, we did have a uh, somebody who did move move on and um, we're hoping they you know nobody's out of work and continues working and we don't have to pay that but you know we did have some exposure there and with everything happening we just weren't sure and we just thought it was best to cover us um, so that that's an increase over over last year um, so that could that could be talked about but that that's kind of where we're at on that. Uh, and then we have group insurance, which is again broken out by town and school. Um, and um, the school's insurance is uh, is down. Do you want to speak to that, Brenda? I'm not sure how those numbers have come up with. I mean, there's a little more on the town this year and a little less on the. Yeah, uh, Barbara goes through a, a very in-depth analysis uh, based on who has insurance uh, at the end of December and who doesn't. Yeah. Um, and then and then we we. Um, take a look at that and we, we add a little bit in there in case that we have additional um, teachers that are going to take insurance in the fall we don't we don't know um, yeah. but there is a little bit of cushion in there and so those those are just the numbers that that um, that it came out to be because you never really know who's gonna who's gonna need insurance and who doesn't um, it can change you know with with a spouse changing or you never know family events change so that's a hard number to that's, a, that's understandable. Yep. You don't know who's going to go single family, too. So. Yep. Exactly. Correct. Yep. Um, and then Medicare insurance um, is, is up a little bit over last year. Um, I don't know. If everybody's staying home, the families could go up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that is very true, John. Yep. <laughs> a bump there. Um, so, so that's really the whole budget, um, and we're, you know, we're at, um, you know, we're not a whole lot more than um, kind of what was, we're, we're, we're about where was recommended a little bit more, maybe $5,000 more than what was recommended, but obviously you can see back by all that, those changes, that's kind of where it washes out, um, about 23723 over over last year's budget, um, so that's, Think doing a very good job of trying to keep it as slim as possible and then cover all this craziness that we don't know about um and then we we get into these other items which i'll I and mean, we can come back to this too but i'll just finish up with page. So the warrant article um because we'll have this question here too we have sewer payroll and um you know that actually we don't because that that all just gets done through um the Enter enterprise fund right so i don't right. have anything to look at there we used to have we used to do that, but now we have an enterprise fund for that. We have the reserve fund, um, which we have had at um, 100,000 for, for quite a long time. And um, this year we, we've done very good. We have not really need to pull on that much at all, uh, which has been great. Um, and then the SCEMS enterprise fund, um, we've also reduced a bit because, um, you know, that was less than recommended. And uh, Zach actually looked at where, where he could pull some money out and, um, uh, he was able to save, you know, quite a bit of money there um, and pull from some pain dirt, I think, to bring that down a bit and uh, and other savings. So uh, that was moving in the right direction. Um, the Dickinson Library Trust is a kind of a pass-through thing as well. Um, and then we have, a, you know, a one student that will be at the Smith Vocational for tuition and, and um, transportation. And there's really not much we can do about that. That's Those are kind of what the fees are. And, and, then, and I'll just 
I'll just yep. point out that it's $2,000 more than what the Finance Committee had approved. Oh. Uh, but the reason for that is that we received a bill this spring that indicated that there was some disability that we were paying extra for. So uh, we added that money back in so that it was uh, reflective of what we really should be spending. Okay. Thank you. Um, um, the only t I'd like to just tickle on that line is, um, Casey, can you just verify sometime in October going forward that the person who is at Smith is it actually enrolled in a program that is not offered at Franklin Tech? Because sometimes they say they it's go there. Criminal, for... It's criminal justice, Carolyn. Right. Right. It's criminal yeah. justice, and they're the only one. But yes, I can check in with them. Yeah, just, yeah, just make sure they haven't checked, uh, moved to another program, because if they get out of criminal justice or the agricultural thing, then they have to come back to Franklin Tech. They, we're yeah. not required to pay for them if they are not sticking with that program. Yeah. And but we need to. No. So we'll double check that. Uh, so OPEB, is, and this is following our, you know, our, our policy of the 4% that we pay into the retirement um, every year. Um, that That is, I believe, 4% of that number um, uh, is, is moving into OPEB. Um, so that's up a little bit. Um, it's nowhere near enough, but, and, and that's a discussion. What do we do? You know, if we were in a world of hurt, we could we could hold off on that a year, but we're just digging a deeper hole. So, um, you know, I have I have plans when we finally get some revenue coming into the town um, that we have some things to it to to really fund that um, a lot more a lot more healthily. So we can you know we can really start to cover that because that um, it's just not enough. But you know, it's one dollar too many too. Um, so we don't have any any money going into stabilization this year, unfortunately, because uh, we're trying to trim back. But we could look, you know, when we all meet again in the fall, we could see where things shake out. If we have some ability, we could do that. Um, so I'm going to come back to the capital request in a second. Um, so we have no one nice overage. We, do we know that number or do we have any overage this year? We do have overage, but the uh, determination... Um made by the committees earlier in the year is that we would do a reserve fund transfer okay. instead of, of bringing it to town meeting. And um, right now that overage is $17,306.82. I have it on a note because I'm going to do a transfer request. Okay. And we have plenty of room in that, in that budget. Yes. Yeah. yeah, at yeah. this point. Mm -hmm. And so we have, you know, we've been starting to put $10,000 away for the 350th celebration. Um, again, if we're in a world of hurt, we could hold off on that. But um, I, I think it sets us back with the ability to fundraise and do other projects that we want to celebrate us. And I'm hoping we can have a really good celebration by the time that rolls around. But um, so that's, you know, discussion to be had by people. Um, and then capital requests from Frontier. Um, I don't know. I have not talked to Darius, and I, and I don't know if that is still going to be requested. There was discussion when I visited, uh, sat in on the on the uh, Frontier School Committee meeting that they may um, they may pull that. But there was so really what they were trying to show is all the stuff that they had given up, and so I think they wanted to show that story because if they just pulled that off of there, everyone. You know, shrug your shoulders. There was no request, but there really is capital needs, and and we went through all this expense and um and and work to get a capital plan together and start addressing these needs. And this is, you know, we have did vote 1.8 million for for these projects. Um, and this was, you know, this was outside of that. Uh, we we're trying to knock down some of the issues that are needed there. So I, I don't know what Darius's request for the or frontiers request is going to be on that, but that's still in the budget right now. It may disappear by the time we get to June 1st. Um, and the 8,500 bucks, that's a fairly new that, um, that no one's seen. That that was um, a little bit extra money that we had to pay when we redid the um, Green Communities Grant. We redid the the LED lighting and the boilers at the elementary school. Um, we I think we got like 130 or $118,000 in a grant. This was some extra work that needed to be done because of that, but wasn't grant eligible. So it was just kind of work while we were in there doing that, it was required 
so that was a late bill from that we had to pay. Um, and I think that's everything except for the capital request. And I could, you know, open it up with Jeff again and start talking about that. Unless there's other questions people want to hit on before we get to the capital from any of those other lines. Okay. I'd like to discuss World of Hurt. <laughs> um, I think we don't know if we're going to be in a World of Hurt. Right. Kind of been flagged by the tone of your speaking. So I'm wondering about some of these line items, if we could just put them off until September or October and see where we stand at the end of September, October from the revenue side. And, and if things rosy, then we can vote them in again. On the capital, on the capital request, you mean? Or, or what, what? Capital requests, OPEB. Um, you mentioned the 350th celebration if we're in a world of hurt. Yeah. Um, so a few others. Just, just defer them until the fall so we know what's going on. And then if we're not in a world of hurt, then we can spend it. Mm -hmm. It's easier if we That's approve it because it's a you know, line item that was there. And then right. it, what happens is what I would envision happening is in the fall, we would have, we would look over our situation and be reviewing our budget several times in the fall and in the winter based on what what's happening. Because nobody really knows, John, to tell you the truth. Oh, that's wrong. I know nobody knows. And I'm just trying right. to be conservative and not approve it now. My feeling is if it gets approved now, there's a greater chance it'll be spent. No, well, John, John, I think we, I think we are John, leaving. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, John, I, I think what could happen tonight is is that uh, as far as the finance committee, we're planning on, on discussing this Friday. So the finance committee does not have to vote this tonight. And no, we, can, we can I'm, I'm we can discuss to... this. Right. Go ahead. And, no, I, I understand you're making a point and and uh, and I think. I think that's where we stand as far as where select board uh, is coming from and where finance committee is coming from. And I think that's, as I said, I think that's something that we can discuss further uh, Friday as far as the finance committee, uh, mm -hmm. exactly some of those things you were discussing. Yeah, that, I mean, that's what I, I thought, too, is that you would, um, you know, this, this would be kind of what we feel like what we need to uh, move forward in the town and then um, once you get done with your meeting and kind of come up with where you want it to be we could then have you know have that discussion and, and uh, obviously town meeting will decide you know how they want to move forward and what what budgets they want to move um, we just wanted to try and move out a lot of that before we get to town meeting go, go ahead Casey we need so the town meeting warrant has to be finalized by Friday yep so yep. it can be posted so we hit that we need to hit the seven day window and we do have a holiday on Monday. So what I would suggest, if you do decide you want to take this stuff out, I wouldn't recommend it, but if you do decide you want to take this stuff out, then we do it on town meeting floor mm -hmm. yep. because we need to finalize the warrant. So if, well, as I said, the finance committee will have to discuss this Friday anyway. So absolutely. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You can do your your stuff there. Um, as a, and hey, this is Julie Crawford. I have like two quick comments looking at this. Um, so this, we took the stabilization out and zeroed that out with the idea that if we had funding um, later in the year, we would be able to re uh, you know put the money back into that. And we're yep. cutting out a lot of capital stuff that with the hope that we will have funding later. There's two items on here that I feel like fall into that same category. It's stuff that we don't expect to spend this year, but we feel like we need to put aside for the future. One is the 350th celebration, and the other is the OPEB. Both of those we want to fund, but we're not going to spend them this year. So I think those are really good candidates like the stabilization for zeroing out now with the intent of plussing them up 
this fall if we can. Brenda, can you speak to the open? I think your idea on the 350th is, is right on. Yes. Um, on the OPAB, I'm not so sure we can do that because we have a policy Correct. that we are following on that one. There's a trust, Julie. And we put money in the trust. And every time you put money in the trust, it helps you earn more money because it's invested. Oh, I don't think that. Okay. I don't think sounds like this we, sh we should be sending money out of our checkbook to invest. Investment. The perfect time. You buy low, John. It is the perfect time. My husband's made over a hundred percent back on what he lost. <laughs> uh, but no, I hear, you, I hear what you're saying. Um, so kind of that's what, and, and then also I think Brenda was going to uh, chime in at the end there talking about how much we're rolling forward of free cash as well. So I think we're, you know, when we get to the fall, we look at what has rolled over from unspent uh, because we, we did ask the uh, department heads to really put a, a freeze on what they're spending in FY20. You know, we'll kind of see what's rolling forward in the fall and really get a good idea of what, like you said, Julie, if we can get back money into capital stabilization, I, I, I really think that's important. And, um, and if we pull any of these other items, you know, um, we look back at that too. And I think what falls into that is we could talk about capital requests. Um, if anybody wants, I have an old chart. I don't know if anyone has anything else they could share, but um, I'm trying to think of what was still on there. We, we did pull off the F, this was of the $122,300 request line. We pulled off, oh, we pulled off the truck, which was 32500 the roadside mower is 26,000, but that's a pass through. Um, uh, let's see, we, the mini excavator is not on there. Um, I'm just trying to think of what else is here. We had a- The, the police cruiser terminals for the yeah. police cruisers, yeah. the data terminals. The data the terminals. Computers computers pull those out. Yeah, we did keep on the uh, police data migration because I think she felt was really important to make sure we capture that information and get it moved over. That to is the, correct. The secure uh, data um, terminals, um, uh, the secure data, so we can secure that data. Um, we had, uh, let's see, I'm trying to think what else is in here. So we had Deerfield Elementary. We had the restroom floors in the gym. Um, excuse me. The, yeah, the restroom renovation and the, the flooring. And, then and replacement the, flooring. And replacement floor. flooring. That's right. And um, I, I don't know where, I'm trying to remember where we ended up on that. Uh, <laughs> I mean, we, we, we had a conversation about possibly either pulling them out or funding them through school choice. But we yeah. were, were sort of waiting for the other shoes to drop and um, the, uh, the $65,000 question was answered in some respects. Um, I'm inclined at this point in time to say, why don't we leave them in? Uh, because it just continues. The longer, the more we put things off, the the worse things get. Um, and if it That's ultimately has to, if it has to, ultimately has to come from school choice, it will, I guess. Yeah. Um, but as I said, we we moved twenty thousand dollars over there with the express consideration of the um, need to buy the. Uh, Chromebooks, but now we have twenty thousand dollars that I think we can, I think ultimately we can help with the funding of that at the school yeah. level. So I would leave them in place to be done and get the work done as quickly as possible. Personally, yeah. but I'm, I'm only I, speaking as only speaking as one committee member. But and, and ahead, now, John. John. I'm waiting for John. Can I speak as one committee member? There was an article in the uh, recorder this morning. The headline of Montague in financial uncertainty, the town postpones capital projects and unnecessary payments. And um, myself and at least one other person on the finance committee before reading this has said we should postpone and wait mm -hmm. till the, it's just kind so, of. So, Brenda, can you speak to the revenues, the discussion you had with Tom Scanlon, our auditor? 
Uh, sure. Um, I, I did share that with the finance committee last week, but um, yeah. but I know we have more people on the on the call tonight. So um, Tom and I had a had a discussion about uh, state revenues and and what we could expect from the state. And of course, you know nobody really knows at this point, but he felt that we were pretty safe. Um, right now to budget 15% less on unrestricted government aid and 15% less on state-owned land than what the governor had proposed in the spring. And so I did do that on our revenues. He also said that many communities were um, basically considering Chapter 70 to be level funded from fiscal 20. So I did that as well. Um, there have been lots of discussions about the local receipts, and we did bring down local receipts. Um, oh, goodness, how much was that? Um, about 150000 from what we had originally thought that we could take in for local receipts, bringing down motor vehicle excise, um, mo uh, rooms and meals tax. Um, we brought down... Um, licenses and permits a little bit because if we're closed again in the fall, um, who knows how that will affect that, and we did bring down investment income. So based on, on those changes, um, we felt that that was, was um, uh, pretty conservative. Um, obviously, we don't know what the state's going to do if they were to make some real drastic cuts. That's when we go back in the fall and we make drastic cuts. Um, but we felt like this was a conservative approach that is acceptable for the time, being that we don't have any final answers. Could I speak um, uh, this, Jeff, when, sure. when you're done, Brenda? No, go ahead if you... If you well, finish. I just thought I'd I just thought I'd finish out the revenue revenue um, in that uh, when we came down to the bottom, um, there was um, a total of I think it uh, it's it's close to four hundred and seventy thousand that was given back in the budgets, three hundred thousand from the schools and one hundred and seventy thousand out of our out of our our our, our town budgets. Um, so with that all in mind and the reduction of revenues, we actually end up having, um, and you'll see that on your revenue sheet, there's um, 400 and almost $412,000 that we're keeping back in free cash. Now, when you, when you look at the revenues to date, the revenues to date are, are, are decent. Um, yes, we're not, gonna, we're not gonna be selling stickers, so our sticker revenue is down. Um, there's a couple of others that are down, but overall, our, our revenues are pretty good. We've collected many of the many of the tax payments. Um, Barbara felt like we were pretty close to being on track there. So, um, so overall, I think as far as ending this year and coming up with free cash, um, I think we're going to be okay. Um, we're certainly not in trouble like some of the towns are in trouble because uh, all of their revenue is marijuana or all of their revenue is um, meals and use tax. You know, uh, we're a pretty rounded community. We have a lot of different different sources of revenue that I think um, makes it makes this pandemic um, a little less tenuous for us. And that's what I wanted everybody to hear. Okay. Thank you. Um, but Jeff, what, what did you what did you want to say? Yes, yeah, I, I would like to just address the capital stabilization and relationship to the budget now, and I and I appreciate everything that you've done uh, as far as select board and Brenda and so on and so forth. Uh, but I am personally, I am a little concerned here uh, because it's a, it's a little scary. We are carrying over. Uh, you know, like 400,000 free cash, which is great. But it, it was at the expense of, of two large areas. One, the schools, and I thank them for uh, stepping up to the plate and doing the level funding. But unfortunately, we probably won't be able to expect that to happen next year. And I think we can all agree that next year is going to be a pretty rough year. 
And so if you took their dollar amount out of that free cash, and then if you took the 250000 uh that did not go in the stabilization fund, capital stabilization fund, that comes up with, you know, that's a pretty large dollar amount. So the, the capital stabilization fund, and, and I agree with what you're saying when you look here, we do have enough money to afford it's roughly, I think, around $90,000 of items. Now, this has nothing to do with any money that we would have to do up front to match grants, any grant money, because we do have, you know, uh, some, some grant items on here uh, that we're going to have to do some type of a match with. So that doesn't include that dollar amount. And then when you move forward, when you move forward, we've already taken uh, uh, 67500 and kicked it into FY22. When you take at what's anticipated for FY22 in uh, the capital improvement plan, it, and I'm not talking the sewer, I'm not talking about culvert replacement, I'm not talking about LED lighting, street lighting, because anything grant you just take out of there, including a possibility of $8 million for uh, the library, even if that's just the fixed assets that were, that is, that's on the schedule, we're already up to, uh, around $603,000. So we have a total of $611,000 roughly in the stabilization fund right now. The current trend is three years ago, we were able to put 250000 there. Two years ago, we were only able to put 200000 in. Last year, we were only able to put 150000 in, even though we were requesting 250 each year. This year, we were able to put in zero. And the reason why we haven't been able to put those dollar amounts in is because we've had to use that stabilization money that, or the potential that could have been for the stabilization to help balance the budget. And what, I guess what I'm saying is that's a trend that's been happening for the last four years here. And I think it just raised a red flag to people that uh, if we continue with this, and obviously next year we're probably not going to be able to fund it either. It would be nice if we could, but I just don't see that happening. And I just want to be aware that we have roughly about $600,000 to spend. And with this year and next year, we've got around $700,000 worth of requests. So, and that's not including anything that goes beyond that. Uh, I looked at the next couple of years, and fortunately they're not huge, but each one of those are about $100,000 also. And I, I realize we're focused on FY21 and trying to make this work, trying to make this budget work and that, but I, I just hope we're, we're not short-sighted here. And uh, I think we need to really, and I think a lot of people are, we need to really look down the road, and I think we need to uh, seriously look at, at the capital plan and see what we can actually afford and what we should hold on. Because I have a feeling that your 600000 there, uh, that's going to come into play because I don't think your free cash, I just don't think your free cash is going to be able to uh, handle these uh, capital expenses that you have coming down the road. And that's just one individual opinion. Uh, but, you know, we... We, as a committee, have recommended this back in the end of February, beginning of March. This is a, is a plan that we recommended, uh, unfortunately, before this all, all broke. Uh, you know, if we had known ahead of time that this was going to happen, the capital plan may look a little bit that's off. So I just hope that people keep that in mind. And that's, you know, that's up to the select board now as far as how and when they want to amend this. And, you know, you've already done a few 
uh, you've already taken a few steps. So it's something that you may want to review, and I'll leave it like that. And, and then just um, also to go ahead, somebody else. Oh, I was going to say. Can so I, can I'm do I'm I'm finished. If anybody else has any thoughts about the capital plan, capital request, uh, you know, I'm all, almost tend to let's sit on it and let's see what happens in the fall. But um, right. Ask a question. You to unrelated to capital. Yep. Uh, Brenda, I I think you've really been conservative. And what else could you do under the circumstances? But did you discuss property taxes with Tom? Uh, we didn't. We didn't I guess, talk I about. And there is, is a lot of people unemployed. And what's going to happen when they get their tax bill and they don't have the cash? Well, actually, a lot of those people that are unemployed are getting paid more than they were when they were working. Yeah. Uh, I mean, really, when, when, when you look at it, but. Heard. But there's um, a lot that too. Yeah, that that was not something that we discussed. I, but I think that needs to be considered when you're looking at the revenue detail. I don't did, think you see. Did, did, cap I, did I hear you say, Brenda, that revenues at this point in time on the tax um, tax side of things are coming in? In the mm -hmm. yes, yes, yes. Um, quite quite well. Yeah, I mean that doesn't that doesn't speak to what's going to happen in December, but uh, certainly in June, or May June timelines, we we I don't I don't think I'm hearing that there are a lot of um, people that are running in arrears at this or anything out of the norm happening on the arrears side. Right. No. Nor right? Uh, normally we Barbara has only five to seven accounts that um, run behind, and usually they have payment plans. And there's just a couple additional ones. They're really surprisingly oh, yeah. there just wasn't any issues. Okay. We're in really, really good shape as far as that goes. Uh, from like you said, there's only like five or seven from last year that that we were thinking about taking into tax title, but we're going to wait with. Um, mm -hmm. right. Where there's usually 12 to 13 of them. So. Okay. So to do yeah. that, we that's sort of a relief thing. This is Jeff. Can I ask another question? Sure. Sure. Uh, this maybe Julie would have a better uh, idea. Have we received any information on the uh, building assessments? They are. They're still doing the project. They were slower. Um, they had some trouble getting access to the buildings because we were shutting everything down. So they asked for a, I think, 60-day extension to that? Yep. They asked for a 60-day extension, and actually they're scheduled to go into the police department and finish up the things they have to do in the town hall on Friday. Okay. Is, you know, that's another consideration. You know, we have a list of things that, that aren't in the budget, and that we've talked about for years, and once again, are we in a situation where uh, we expend monies and then not do anything again? And and I know we're in a tough situation, budget and that, but you know, we 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 still have you know we have some major expenses here that somehow, way, shape, and form. Either we're going to put them off, or we're not going to spend the money. It's going to take a little time to put them off, and just and just keep studying what you know what we can do. Um, I still need to move forward. I know that the world is kind of crashing down, but but it's not going to end. We're going to keep going. We have you know one five one point five million in in the stabilization, just general stabilization, and that's a rainy day fund, and and it may be pouring by next year or even by the winter. Um, but we, we can pull from that, you know, when we need to, to, to make sure that we can kind of continue operating. Um, we're not going to burn it all up. And, you know, I don't think the floor is just going to completely drop out from under us. And we're looking at, at, at growth, at, at economic development. There's a lot of good projects that are coming. You'll get, you'll get to the um, warrant. Well, I know this meeting's going to go long, but we have the warrant to go over. And there's, you know, there's revenue that's going to come from uh, several solar projects. And, 
um, marijuana is going to get off the ground. There's a lot of revenue that can come from that. So we're not in really tough shape. You know, we have a good plan going forward, but it's just all, all the pieces going to have to align. But I think it's important to appropriate the money and be extremely frugal on how we spend it over the next year, year and a half, and, and really all get back together again in the winter here or late fall winter and go, okay, what is what do we get for free cash? What's certified? You know, by then we're going to have a budget from the state. We're going to know a little bit more. Okay, we got another cut, another ten percent. Okay, so we cut ten percent. We pull from from stabilization if we have to, or we cut out some other thing that we were planning to spend. Um, all be very attentive to this budget. I think we budget, and we know the you know the world's moving forward. We continue doing our work um, and moving the town forward on a lot of the, a lot of these fronts, but. But, you know, just right, you know, the library is a big looming, you know, expense. We have to all decide at the town, do we want to take that risk on right now? Or we have a, a large sewer project that's going on. We still, you know, we've kind of put old Deerfield out of mind, but it's in worse shape than South Deerfield. So um, we have a lot of, um, we have a lot of projects going forward, but we, we're working on a lot of grant opportunities. And, you know, our staff has been working immensely. I, I can't even believe how much they're getting done on top of all of this, I know Casey probably thinks I've got nothing done but COVID. But uh, but every day it's another disaster, and getting people on meetings, and it is sucked the energy out of all of us. Um, but it will pass. We'll get by this. We'll figure it out. We're in really good shape. We have smart people running this town. Um, not grouping me in that. I'm talking Brenda and and our finance committee <laughs> on top of a lot of this stuff. I think we're going to be okay. Um, I could be proved wrong, but I think we're going to be all right. I, Trevor, I'd just like to our, add, oh, um, for the okay. first time in four or more years, we actually have a full, fully staffed select board office um, that is running along really well. And so we have the ability to target some of the yeah. – the last couple of years, I mean, we've been getting grants, but – we're not near, you know, normally we're, we have more ability to get grants. And um, so I'm seeing us being us in a position so that we can actually get the grants and then, you know, report, report them out and, and it will help us supplement the budget. I mean, it really will make a difference, I think. And we'll see some good revenues coming in from some of these projects too. The solar project, the landfill, and solar, solar um, the other one up on set right. Um, and if we get marijuana off the ground, we'll have we'll we'll have some good money coming in. Um, that's and and the challenge. thing to remember too is uh, where we screwed up in the financial crisis year was that we weren't able to shift any of our costs over. We didn't have anything that was shovel ready. We have the sewer treatment plant, which is shovel ready. We have several culverts already engineered, which are shovel ready. There's a lot of stuff that we can um, apply for if there's an infrastructure um, project, you know, plan coming out from Congress this next year. I mean, there's been no infrastructure program at all in the last four years. So um, I would foresee a huge one to get the economy started kick-started, and we will be able to participate this time. Mm -hmm. That will have huge impact on our capital, Jeff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. no, I understand. Hope so. Yeah. Um, we, we've still got a long meeting to go with this, um, with the uh, warrant um, that we all want to discuss and have you guys review, too, because I don't know how much time you have on Friday, but I want to hit on this, this um you know, this warrant and, and get some advice from you guys as well. Um, do you guys want to talk about the budget any further? Or I know you guys will meet Friday and you'll kind of come back with, with recommendations. Um, we'll roll forward with what we're thinking and we'll kind of see how that all shakes out. Um, any other questions on like the budget right now? Or like the only thing I would hit on that capital uh, improvement plan is I had 40000 in there for the uh, common. And, you know, I, I've been waffling a lot on that. I keep saying that, you know, I'm, I'm happy to take that off if we need to do that, fund it in the fall. But the other thing is, is that if you don't spend that money on um, some engineering, you can't take advantage of any grant, you know, stuff that comes right. along so, or, or infrastructure. So I, I, you know, I, 
I don't know. I'm kind of back and forth on that. And I feel like we do have to keep moving forward on these, on these initiatives that, you know, every time I look on online that we're complaining about the sidewalks, which are legitimate and we need to get moving on the infrastructure of our town. It just, it looks horrible. It, you know, I hear the ladies that walk, you know, every day and, and the sidewalks are a mess. Um, they're broken and, and just upheaved and, Horrible. I was, in, I was in Hatfield the other day, beautiful paved and not paved uh, cement sidewalk, as far as the eye can see. So, uh, I just want our town to look better. And so I just want to move forward on some of these things. But, you know, so I'm willing to, to cut uh, for the good of the community. But uh, we also need to move forward for the good of the community, too, on some of this stuff. So um, any other questions on budget? I do want to make a comment. Oh, go ahead, Julie. I have one question on the budget I saw on the, I don't know if this is a budget or a warrant question, but I saw on the six-ish thousand dollars for a grant um, for the next round of the, you're going to shoot me, culvert grant, what's that called? MVP. MVP grant. Yeah. Yep. Um, so is that in here somewhere or is that in addition to the money that we're already talking about? Yeah, that that just came up this afternoon. So, <laughs> so it is not it is not figured into anything that's that's uh, been printed yet. And that's a discussion. Do we want to you know do those grants and and be involved in that to get to get all that money or or not? Yeah, that's a, you know something we all have to talk about. But it's a good question, Julie. I haven't seen that. Yet. You're muted. You're muted, Casey. <laughs> You. There you are. So the reason it's in there is the MVP, the next round of MVP, MVP came out very quickly, and the board had several items they wanted to talk to. Some of which are discussed. Some of which are a little more expensive than others. But one of them, the most expensive one, would be to develop some engineering for Wapping Road to fix some of the culvert connection that goes from Wapping Road to Mill Village. We already have a Mill Village culvert project with MVP now. And this would build on what we'd be doing on the other end, which is the Mill Village end. Um, this isn't something that's been discussed with capital because it hadn't come up. Yes. And we, we, have a we actually have an MVP meeting on Friday to discuss it because it's a new round. But this is perpetual storm area, I mean, it, uh, uh, just an inch of rain floods the entire area. Um, all those septic systems have failed. Um, this is a, you know, threat to Richardson's Candy Kitchen and the country store and the daycare that's there. And, um, you know, if, if there is multiple possibilities, you know, we've done our um, renewed um, our hazardous mitigation plan, so we're now eligible again for the hazardous mitigation plot, you know, money, that pot of money. There's also the MVP program. There's, you know, multiple other grants potentially to, um, you know, get this done. So it's an area that it's been, you know, it was from the landslide in 2011 right after Irene that November when we had Snowtober, if you remember, it silted down to Wapping Road and, you know, it was storm damage that there was just, no, you know, nothing we could do about it. So we've been trying to fix it ever since. This would create, the, this would allow us to develop the engineering to make the project shovel ready. And the other items kind of in there were kind of the green parking lots at Frontier and the town the town lot, the center town center Leary lot that we're looking at developing too with that MVP grant um, for you know for kind of green parking lots. And you know we we've already ponied up the money. Well, I haven't ponied up yet, but we approved the uh, expenditure for Frontier to repave, and we're hoping that we could you know we can roll that construction part into that grant, which would be a huge thing. And Frontier is going to match. That grant. Frontier's so, already got a map set aside for that. Yeah, so I think, um, you know, if we, again, we, we put money aside to, to tackle these projects, we could save us money in the long run on a lot of the stuff that we've already planned on paying. So, yeah, that's another whole topic. So, 
Um, anybody mind if I get to that more? <laughs> it's going to be a long night. Well, if we don't. I, I just do. Does the capital planning committee need to adjourn at this point in time? I don't know if Jeff's still here. Yeah, I'm, I'm still here, and, and I was wondering the same thing. I was just running down through the article here to yeah. see if there's anything that we really needed to discuss. Uh, there's Article 18, Capital Projects, but that's just, uh, you know, voting or provide a sum of money. So whatever the uh, board ends up, uh, you know, as far as amending you know, it, it could stand the way it is, or they could do further amendments. So I would say whatever they determine, that would be uh, coming up for vote on your warrant. So if people don't need to discuss that, then I foresee that uh, the capital improvement uh, committee could adjourn. Um, can I just take a, a, a rough survey of... It, are are people supportive of us re, just voting it as is until and then have it reviewed again in the fall? I mean, really, we don't have a lot of information. So it makes sense to go forward on our best because we reviewed everything. We put a lot of time into those requests. I hate to just drop them and then have to start all over again. The best thing in my mind would be to review it in the fall when we actually know what's, you know, what's happening. Yeah, so what you're saying is vote, vote the dollar amount uh, that, that the uh, select board and Brenda have come up with? Yes. And, my, my, yes. I, what it's, the it's, select board would like to do? Right. Well, that's the way I feel so, because we... You were making poor decisions. We made good decisions based on, you know, the review of all the projects and all that kind of stuff. And, and we're being forced to make poor decisions now because we don't have a lot of information. My, my thought is just, you know, we vote. We're not in a bad situation. So we just vote like we, like we intended to and then move forward to have a review an initial review in the fall, but also just and uh, whether it's monthly, whether it's every other month or whatever, until we work our way out with adequate information. I, I, our decisions were not incorrect. Yeah, no, I, I understand what you're saying, Carolyn. So, and, and remember, we've already re recommended this, the the committees already recommend this, and and we uh, as a committee. Can't really change this. Uh, what we've already voted because of the uh, 60 days prior to uh, annual town meeting. So the the select board has has the authority to amend it, which you already have done uh, once with the removal of the pickup truck and the removal of the police terminal uh, cruiser terminals. So right. you, you have taken, so you have taken those out. So the way I see it is, you just you move forward. I think it came up to around 122,000, something yeah. like that. Yeah. Uh, for for FY21, with those items removed. So I would say, as a select board, you just you know you move that forward, and then we can revisit in the fall and see where we're at. Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to make sure everybody was on the same page that no money was actually going to be spent without some kind of review, but it didn't make sense to just slash stuff without having more information. Right. Well, that's just, that's up to the, from my perspective, that's up to the select board if they feel comfortable putting that on the table and, and voting that. And feel that they can afford the the 122 uh, or whatever change it comes up to, you know that's your prerogative. If you is as a select board, you look at that uh, and and the overall budget say, no, nah, we we really need to hold on this some this stuff. You know, you can again you can amend further if you feel you need to. 
So that's that that uh, as from what I understand in bylaw at this point that uh, falls you know w- within your authority as far as the select board goes. Okay. Well, I, I hope I'm right. To... Is right. If if other if other committee members feel differently, please don't. I hesitate to voice your concerns or any concerns at this time. I agree, Jeff. I, I think we've done, the CIPC has done what it was supposed to do. And and you can okay. still have a discussion on town meeting floor. I mean, if right. we've made a recommendation. If the select board chooses to, you know, alter that, there can still be a, di- a discussion take place on town meeting floor if necessary. And, uh, I mean, the school committee has gone around on this any number of ways. Uh, we're trying to figure out, and, you know, I don't know if we'll have it in time for town meeting, but we, you know, trying to figure out if there's a, a way to get it, the capital done without having it come out of town coffers, so to speak. I mean, it's going to come out of, obviously, money, but... Um, right. You know, once we have the final numbers at the end of the year and we have a clear view of what school choice looks like, we can possibly take some of this, you know, take some of the pressure off on the on the actual money. It's not huge money we're looking at, but they're important important projects. I mean the the bathrooms are getting to the point they're not a health issue yet, but they're they're not terribly healthy. <laughs> so we right. like to, no, I, I you know. Yeah, I think we all understand that. <laughs> so, anyways, so, so, anyway, I appreciate everyone's input and the hard work, certainly that the finance committee does, and Casey and your team, and yeah. Barbara and her team, and you know, just the whole Brenda. team down there's been unbelievable. You know, I was going to say Brenda too. <laughs> Brenda uh, does our was included. All, <laughs> yes, it's all it's all there together. But you you folks are just. It's the, the amount of work that's taking place this spring in particular is just unbelievable. So thank you. Um, you would know. <laughs> I, I'd like to uh, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn the, the CIPC I'll second. meeting. I'll second Do I have that. a second on the all right. So the motion has been made. It's seconded that the capital improvement committee adjourns the meeting at this time. Uh, any further discussion? Okay, we'll go around. All in favor, Ken, start with you. Yes. John? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Skip? I don't know if Skip and Jack are still around. All right, Jack? <laughs> yeah, I don't know if did. Jack... I don't see yeah. Jack on the screen anymore, so I'm assuming he. He's I don't either. Out. Okay, well, Jeff is voting yes too, and and uh, hopefully when Jack Thank sends the out part. to our meeting, we'll make note of that, and uh, he can send me a copy. Hopefully, if anybody hears from him or sees him, <laughs> I would appreciate that. Okay. Okay, so we're we're done with the capital uh, improvement committee meeting. And Trevor, go back to you with the articles. Thank you. Please don't have a good night, all. <laughs> I need to be around, huh? Yeah, good. See, hang on for a little bit. Thank you. See you, Ken. Thank you. Um, so I'm just going to, I'll go through this um, article. But there's, a, there's a real concern from our attorney and from Dan Graves that, that this, uh, these articles, there's too many of them for, for a quick meeting. Um, okay. And, and it's tough because a lot of these, you know, we're trying to be cognizant, but some stuff you just got to do. So I'm just going to hit these real quick. Some of these are, uh, and stop me if you want, but um, report of the officers, that's a common thing. Article of elected co- officials compensation, that's a common thing. We just knocked through that pretty quick. Acknowledgement of gifts to the town. I think we can do that pretty quick, but we could hold that till the fall. Um, I mean, I really want to thank this, you know, the, the um, the schools and the nonprofits and everybody that does gift to the town. Um, I think it's a nice thing to do, but if, if that needs to move to the fall, I think that's probably fine. Um, the library interest, that's a common thing that needs to get done. Um, so, so that I think has to be there because it, it's based on our, our budget. Um, 
the select board contract authority and that um, also with the assessor's contract authority allows both entities to negotiate um, contract longer than five years. Um, it, it has to come up every year. Um, there was a comment here. This can be combined into one article. Legal reference is the same. I realize that there could be questions though. Um, Lisa tells me that Dan could request these articles be voted as a consent agenda item. This means taking one vote to approve all of them. And I think Casey will chime in, but she's looking to take, after we get through tonight, she's looking to take as many as we can and drop into a consent agenda. And just for everybody, that just means that one vote um, would, would pass all those articles unless there's an right. objection. Anybody can always pull one item out. We try to do at the, uh, if we have a really heavy agenda on school uh, uh, finance committee, but excuse me, on select board. Select board. Committee. So anyway, so, so yeah, those, that would mean seven, six or seven articles would get pulled into one, essentially one table with yep. all the information, but it would allow one vote and it really will move things along. But I have to say, Lisa and Dan and I are, are going to have a meeting and discuss the mechanics of this so that Dan's more comfortable with the understanding. I've seen it happen in other places, so I have a better understanding of how we can do it. And yeah. Lisa's actually given us a basic format that we could use. There's a okay. couple of places in this forum we could do that. Okay, so those are two items that, that's fine with me to do. Um, so the uh, Article 7 is the fiscal year unpaid bill. That, that's the bill I was talking about. You saw in the budget for the, the uh, work that was done with the Green Communities Grant at, at the elementary school. We have to pay that. So that, that's got to be there. Right. Um, so revolving funds, um, these need to get done every year because these are these are funds that help you know that we use to run town, um, and then the reserve fund has to be there as well. Uh, OPEB liability trust, if, if everybody thinks that that needs to move to the fall, I mean, but we really have a policy and we need that money to get in there and start earning for it. That you know, I don't know what the market went up today, but it went up a lot yesterday. Um, the sooner we get it in, the better. Can I question? ask a question? Yes, please. So, Brenda, maybe you can ask, you can clarify this. Did we have to, when we did our bond, or did, right. did the preparation right. for the bond, was our OPEB trust and our OPEB plan part of that plan, part of what we presented? I don't know, because that's, that's Barbara's um, yeah. bailiwick. But because if we presented a plan to pay down our OPEB, we should stick to it. Yeah, I agree with that. I because just that to... that could have well, an effect on our bond rating. Yeah, it it most definitely will have an effect yeah. on our bond rating. Yeah, so, and so that. that's what I would caution everyone to not take away because that is key to keeping the cost of running a bond low. Yeah, and yeah, then I again. guess I guess may I just very quickly uh, respond to that. Uh, this yeah. is. No, and I do understand what you're saying in that, but in these in these times, uh, that may that little policy may be forgiven for this year because of uh, COVID nineteen, but that's not a guarantee. It's just something to look into. Okay. So mm -hmm. go ahead, Trevor. So that's what I wanted to clarify, Jeff. Okay. Yep. And oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Article 11 was the ab district placement for the vocational education that has to be there. So we have to make sure we're funded for, for that student if they go in the fall. Um, Article 12, I thought could be put till the fall. I just put a note on that. That's the 350th anniversary celebration or, you know, I don't know if that can get into a consent agenda because that has a monetary impact. I'm not sure that's allowed, but, um, or do we have to fund it now? Can we fund it in the fall? I don't know. So question. Anything. Yeah, go ahead, John. Articles 9 through 12 will be on the omnibus budget. They'd see them. Can't you yes. make it out of that? Just to go down the they, number you have to make, number of articles? No, they, I think tag they... Tag it, Brenda. Yeah, they have to be <laughs> What's there. That? I said tag your it. So, John, let me clarify. Are you asking that we would take articles 9 through 12 and put them... Um, into the omnibus budget? Yeah, we see them every at the top meeting. They show his select board. What I, yeah, what I was thinking is if we did a consent article, we could include all of those. 
And actually, there's a note from Lisa Mead, our attorney, to take Article 8 and put it up in the first page's consent article. So we could do that. They, it, it really depends on the comfort level and whether people really want to spend a lot of time talking about this. And Brenda and I had a long conversation about this before you saw this today, was what can we rearrange and how can we rearrange it so that we can press the time of discussion? Right. Yep. Does that make sense? You know, there, there were um, mm -hmm. many articles that we put into the omnibus budget over the last couple of years we took out of, out of having its separate article. Um, these were left in here um, out of district partly because that is a budget that can either happen one year or not happen another. And historically, uh, free cash has been used for that because, because of that, I, I think, because of that reason. Um, the reserve fund, I'm not sure why we've never included that in the uh, omnibus budget, but uh, we use generally, last year we used half free cash and half taxes for it, but this year we're using all free cash for it. Um, and the OPEB liability, usually we use free cash for that. So they've been kept separate. We could put them into the omnibus budget, but if you do, just keep in mind that we will be using free cash every year for our omnibus budget until we get to a point where we can um, uh, do something different. The other thing is with the reserve fund, most towns vote the reserve fund separately because it's a holdout. It's one thing that the finance committee, it's specifically their account. It's their account to control, yeah. Right. So we recognize that in, in a article vote. So, okay, so uh, moving forward, we, we have the co uh, classification compensation plan, and, you know, again, we could hold on that. Oh, no, I'm sorry, we can't. That's not the no, study. we can't that's hold on that. <laughs> that's the plan. <laughs> yeah, that's not, that's not the actual study. Okay, good. So we're, um, that's got to be there. Uh, the omnibus budget has to be there. Um, Trevor, could we back up on 13? Is, is that a new classification compensation plan? I, that's I, a, that's yeah. just the update with the 1.5% cool yeah, in it. Thing, new. Um, it's not a new plan by any means other than just, you know, what, what it includes it, what, the COLA. Yes, and, and COLA. Yeah, it just, just represents the COLA. Um, so just, just the COLA uh, is included in this plan for 21, FY21. Yes. Correct. Yeah. Okay. It's just, just an update of the plan for that 1.5% COLA. And that other thing that yeah. I mixed was the, um, was the study to kind of redo that whole thing. Yeah. Right. That's what I was wondering. Okay. I missed, I missed those up. Um, so we have the omnibus budget. The Article 15 is the Sewer Wastewater Treatment Enterprise Fund. That has to be there as well to fund that. GEMS has to be there to fund that. Um, so Article 17 and, and um, the other one is, is uh, also 17. It's the Rent Stabilization or the Rent Revolving Fund. And Correct. I'll just speak to my recommendation here is to not put it in a revolving fund and to put it in a stabilization fund. Um, the revolving fund, we have the ability to kind of just spend it as we needed, but I think the stabilization fund requires a two-thirds vote to get any money out of there. And the plan that we had um, when we took ownership of that building was to take um, the rent that, that Deerfield would be paid for the building. Since we don't have to pay for the building, we set that money aside in case at some point we need to do a new roof, uh, repave the parking lot, putting a new bay on if we expand service down the road, or you know we need um, new uh, medical storage equipment, we could have uh, money set aside to do that. So we weren't constantly going back to the taxpayers um, for money. And this was funding, you know, maintenance of this building. However, there'll be a portion of that that we need to spend every year to mow the lawn and plow the snow and, you know, different kind of things, you know, if the a washing machine breaks or there's something simple like that. So we were going to take 25% of that $36,000 a year and put it in the general fund to be able to maintain that building um, and, and the, you know, the general yearly needs of that building. And then the other 75% of that would go into a stabilization account that would strictly be spent on that capital building or that building. So um, that, that building. the maintenance of that building or, you know, a new parking lot, again, new capital kind of, needs. 
capital needs of that building. Right. So um, that may, I, is, may I ask a question sure. on that? Yep. Is there going to be a cap uh, as far as a dollar amount put on that? Well, you mean and will it, reason? will it grow to a point where like oh no we've got you know two million dollars sitting in there at some point and we, we, right. we're, yeah I agree I think. I think we don't have to come up with that language right now because it's going to be years before we get there. But I do think you're right, Jeff. That's got to have some sort of relief valve that once we get to a certain point, we then hold another article or another revision of that fund. And we say, okay, we, we, were, we, we thought we were going to be spending money a lot sooner than they're growing too much. We, we need to, you know, relieve the pressure on this and, and either do a project for the building or, or um, find another way to kind of reduce that funding. Um, so I think it's probably five or six years, seven years, 10 years down the road, but, um, but I do think we could do that next year, work on that for, for, to implement something. So well, I, mean, that, I, yeah, I, I would like, like to see, even, 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 even if we uh, had wording there where if we could uh, reduce uh, town's assessments with oh. that. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I'd like Brenda to check with Tom on that because there's specific things you can do with that and not. In my agreement. Right. right. Well, that's yeah. exactly. So maybe, I you want know. it to be as flexible as possible because maybe we want to buy another ambulance or something like that with it at some point. You know, whatever. Instead of hitting. Well, I, I think, so yeah, I think, I think we're going to get into, uh, you know, uh, some concerns here because I know the uh, everybody supports the ambulance service. Everybody's happy with the ambulance service from what I'm hearing for the most part. My concern is though that when this was proposed on the town floor, it was proposed to be a three town regional ambulance service. And I'm afraid the way this is heading, if we're not careful, this growth is going to become more than a three-town regional ambulance service. I'd rather us take care of the three towns and lower the three towns assessment instead yep. of growing this ambulance service, uh, you know, so big that all of a sudden now we're spending additional monies on additions, additional monies on ambulances. So now instead of having three, we have four. Now we have five. Now we have six. I don't think that was an intent when this was proposed to the towns. So oh, I'm, I'm a little concerned about that. Jeff, it's not the intent. The intent is to, is to just make sure we can keep running our ambulance. The idea was to be flexible if, in fact, we can't keep it afloat as a three-town. We, You know, we... Better to look for another town to help us, but this is not the intent to try to get growth, and it's not the intent to, you know, just randomly have expansion. The, the only intent was to keep the cost sustainable for the town. Yeah, and and right. to be um, and to be honest with the other two towns on what we were, you know, we were intending to do with this is to try and, sure. you know, right, re reduce their assessments if we could. But I think, um, and that's why you I do think... You have to maintain the building, though. This, I, yeah. I was going to well, say you the know, what, I just, fund I just, is, is for the building and, yeah. and for right. the property, not not for anything else. Right. And no. I think well, well, that's what I'm wondering if we're... Lease payments. Are we better off with a rent revolving fund instead of a stabilization fund? No, because you, especially when you start throwing percentages on it, you know. And, and I, I understand what you're saying, Trevor, as far as the stabilization fund, because it takes two-thirds vote to get it out. Yeah. And, I, and I do appreciate that, obviously, because I push for it. I just don't want us to get backed into a corner here where all of a sudden... I know some of us view this as far as uh, the three town service, but I also know that people sitting on the board would love to, or some people sitting on that board or involved with it would love to have that grow. Uh, you know, I I just I want to be a little careful with some of this language that we don't get ourselves locked into a situation of a point of no return. I'd rather use any additional monies 
and we should maintain the building. There's no question about it. If there's a need for an addition down the road, no question about it. But I'd rather see additional monies uh, re reduce assessments of towns down the road. That's all. Okay. Uh, so Jeff, I, this is Dave Wolfram. Can I, have to say, uh, can I, can I say something? No, not yet, John. Hang on a second. Okay. i got to reel this meeting back in. getting late. Um, this so is, I, this is Dave Wolfram. Let me. I'll, I'll go back to John, too, and let Karen jump in. The reason I think rate, rent, this month, look, we're not going to wind up with $2 million in this account. I mean, we're getting no. $36,000 a year. Nine of it's going probably to maintain it. You know, it'll be a, a god long time before long we get time. to buy an ambulance or something. But as the, as the South Deerfield Fire Department did, they have enough money set aside to do a parking lot, you know, 20 years out. Had enough money to do the roof, you know, 15, 10 years out. That's the intent of it, is just to maintain that building. And if we thought, you know, we could put some money aside for an addition, it's not going to be enough to pay for an addition. I just think the rent stabilization puts as, as much control through town meeting. If it has a revolving fund, you can spend that money how you need. With the rent, with the stabilization, you have town meeting to say, look, we, we do agree with this. The town agrees that it's worth doing the roof and we're, this is where we're going to pay the money from. And I think it's the safest place to do that and to have a control right. on. And if it does grow large, I think we take it to town meeting. We have a petition to just spend it on something that needs to happen on the building, but it's going to be years before we have enough to do anything really. Uh, yep. John, okay. No, I'm, I'm, I'm fine with that. I just wanted to bring that up. That's all. That's a good point. I was say it would be 12, 12 years before you hit 324,000. So, right. A long time. That's a long time. John, what do you want to say? <laughs> if you're trying to joking. save, all set. Yep. If you're trying to save time at the annual town meeting by cutting back on the articles, here's two you could take out. I don't see why no. you need those We've... in June. No, but, because the, the other towns are really. Uh, <laughs> we have to vote this, John. Yeah. We, we have. Been, all right. Off. Moving off. on, but I think I think the rent. I mean, it's up to you guys, but I, I would make a motion for the rent stabilization fund versus the revolving fund. This is Dave Wolf from our second. It. <laughs> Thank you, Dave. <laughs> Thank you. You know, the, and, and the this is this is the recommendation of the boo. The reason we have to do that right now is because it has to happen um, at the annual meeting to be effective July first. So that then we can we can um, in the fall do um, an article to move some of the some of the lease money in there. Yes. So that's why it has to happen now. Okay. So we have a motion and a second uh, from the select board. Any further discussion? Um, all those in favor? Dave Wolf from I. Aye. Roll call. Uh, Trevor I. I think we got all three there. <laughs> Uh, great. So capital projects, um, that's going to be there in some shape or another. Um, so that, that's obviously going to stay, but how that works, we'll have to get through that. We can look at that tomorrow night again, um, select board, and just kind of finalize that uh, going forward. And then the Frontier Regional School capital, I just had a note here to ask Darius again, is that still moving forward? I think it, I think it is, um, but um, again, like ours, we think are moving forward, but but we'll have to sort that out by the time we get there. Um, but that was that was asked for, and and so it's on there for now until they decide not to do it. And that was um, it was to provide the sum of money for an electric corridor door holds, which is a safety thing for you know school shooter lockdowns, all kinds of stuff. Um, and then it was 15 to repair the central clock system, which is important. Everybody's on time. Um, and 18,000 for repair of interior and exterior intercom system, which is also a safety thing. So that's kind of where we're at on that. Um, and then the community preservation fund, Article 20, is an every every year thing that has to happen. This uh, green communities grant match, um, that's the it's one. It's actually an MVP. I mislabeled that. Sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. It's MVP grant yeah. match. So. Um, we have to kind of talk about this tomorrow night as well and how much of that yep. there there is something, you know, I think maybe we'll just bring this up tomorrow night if that's okay, but to talk about the ideas for Deerfield, which is the stream restoration, healthy soils, uh, green 
parking lots, green infrastructure, rain guard tree boxes, which I think is gone now, um, the uh, Frontier High School Climate Science class programming, which is small, and, and the green infrastructure policy implementation, which is also very small. So um, so anyways, we'll, we'll talk about that tomorrow night, but Article 22, um, th these are important. These are, I don't think these should move to September. These are the landfill solar uh, uh, project um, lease and pilot. So this is revenue into the town. And it's also uh, Article 23 is the old frontier solar, which I believe is set right road. And it looks like Casey's got a question. We only have three hours for the meeting. So we might, I just want to warn people in case we get kicked off. <laughs> oh, for our meeting. Okay, I'll move it along. For this meeting, yeah. So, and then we have the um, Prevere North Main Street land acquisition, and and uh, I don't, and then and then Article 25 is also the land acquisition that the Capital Improvement Planning uh, Planning Committee moved ahead with, which was the uh, that other piece of property. So those items, I, I mean, they should go fairly quickly, but those are all on there. John, go ahead. Uh, the Finance Committee still on. Should we adjourn? No. Hang on, because I, I mean, I mean, yeah, I, I just want to have time to adjourn before you hear the stop. conversation. Yeah, real quick. Um, I'll, I'll just get through the rest of these and then um, and then you guys I don't want to get kicked off. That's all. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. Um, so we have the landfill, the old frontier solar, the two properties uh, on North Main to make up the athletic field. Then we have Article 26 with the pilot precision TIF. Um, I had a question. Could we hold this till September? I know that they really need this. Can we have a discussion about that with them? Or we can. What actually we were going to, I was going to talk to Lisa and Dan about that because there's three, there's at least two things this TIF and the acceptance of the public way. I don't think right. we're going to have all the documents ready for the public way. So I think we're going to have to okay. hold off for a special on that. I'd rather do that. If we can move any of that, that would be great. Um, and, and I don't have all the information I need for the TIF. Okay, and then the last article, which is, I think it's the last article, 28, which is like, half of the warrant um, is really, um, and I'll speak to this pretty quickly and I could do it again tomorrow night. Um, so this is a marijuana bylaw. There are two, so everybody remembers a couple of years ago, we, we, we uh, allowed marijuana in here. We have two facilities that uh, are building in town, one Deerfield Naturals across from the hotel, uh, the motel, um, right on the line with Waitley. And then we have other one, which is Harvest, or it's actually Mass Suns, Inc., which is down by Melmac Farms, down by the river. That's cultivation only. Um, there is uh, a need for um, processing the plants where they're grown. And because they can make, um, you know, squeeze the oils out and make gummies and just kind of process the plant so it can be sold. If that can all happen on that property, it's a lot more revenue to the town. So uh, what we're really hoping to do is, um, you know, what, what the, there were two things that we were trying to fix with the zoning on marijuana. One was that our zoning said any retail establishment can't be within two feet of another one. Um, if another one goes to Sugarloaf shop, that's within 2,000 feet of us. So what we wanted it to just say was in Deerfield. So there can't be another marijuana retail establishment within 2,000 feet of another one in Deerfield. So and I think that was our intent when we all did it. I think everybody understands that. But we just wanted to make sure if something slid into the Sugarloaf shops in Waitley, it didn't preclude the man who's been building his place out at Deerfield Natural. So, um, so that was just one of the quick things we wanted to fix. Um, the, and then I think the attorney for, um, for Sun's Mass, which was kind of pushing this forward and had hearings through the planning board, wanted to make sure that, uh, wanted to say that um, in the RA district, you can manufacture um, where you're growing. And, and I think this, the, the problem is, is this language allows it anywhere in the RA district as long as it meets all those other needs, you know, so many squats. So many thousand square feet and you know all, all these kind of requirements for a special permit but um what we wanted to do was kind of limit that and uh not allow it anywhere else in the ra district but just to allow it um in a co-located cultivation place so the only one that could really do it would be the one at mass suns right now no other place could put one in 
no other place would be um, ability to uh, to put another another manufacturing place in because there's some you know the, the planning board was moving along with a process to not allow it anywhere and um, we think that it's important to have it where it's already secured and located so um, but I think that that broader discussion needs to get flushed out in better hearings throughout the town and much more substantive discussion that we can all do together when we can do it together. Um, the only reason I'm, I'm really wanting this marijuana bylaw on the, this issue is that it drives a tremendous amount of money into our coffers. If we, if we allow production, we already have cultivation, if we allow production of that plant on that property, it can also produce all the plants that, it can, that is then going to get products that's going to get distributed throughout the New England out of that one facility. So it can drive a ton of money to help our, our budget. Um, and we figure out like the rent thing, where it goes and how it gets spent. And a lot of towns have to be very careful. Northampton's having an issue with that right now. Um, so, so I wanted to see this happen. This isn't really the vehicle that I would rather have it. We were talking about doing an amendment on town meeting floor to kind of cut out all these pages but um, talking with our attorney today, she thought that our amendment to this on town meeting floor might be substantial enough that, um, that it does require a hearing. So um, we were thinking we would just move forward with this, but you know, say that we're not gonna move forward with any other plant. We're not gonna do any other host agreement for any other facility in Deerfield. So you're really just going to be focusing on the one facility that's there. The one down by um, the Sugarloaf shops is already in the marijuana district. And if we allowed this, they could manufacture there as well. So it really it, it encapsulates both communities and, and then but then doesn't allow us to do anything in the future until we all have a series of meetings. So that's a convoluted um, explanation and it's hard to kind of get across, but um, Questions, anybody? I think you did a good job, actually. <laughs> Would you be discussing um, a way to move forward with the planning board if you yes. agreed not to op not to do any more host agreements until you had that chance? Yes, I'm really trying to get a hold of the planning board and have not been successful. Okay. Any discussion? Okay, I sent John an email. I'll send him another one. I saw that. Yes, I'd really like to speak to him because I want to make clear to him that. I just because this goes into effect, I, I will not act on any of it. Um, we will not bring in any host agreement for any facility with manufacturing in it in any other RA district until we have a chance to discuss where we even think. As, as I think Carolyn had talked about in a meeting, is it is it um, you know are there any other places in the RA district that we want any cultivation, or is there anywhere that um, you know we want to protect our healthy soils? That's another part of the you know, the green, the MVP stuff is where in Deerfield do we want to protect our land for agricultural growing because it's the best soil in our, in, in the area, in the country. It's just an excellent oh, place to grow crops. Um, so, so we want to think about that really well. I mean, I think the planning board was going at it with like no to everything. We don't think that's right. And yes to everything isn't right either. So I think there needs to be better, better discussions on all that stuff. But I do want to protect the facility that's there, keep the manufacturing that's already secured there and, and drive the revenue into our, into our, you know, into our coffers and not some other town. Cause I'm, I'm tired of waiting for it to come to Deerfield. Okay. I just want to say that um, when we first did the, when Dick and I first did the uh, marijuana legislation, the idea was for us to be, <laughs> to start, pulling in some money and we haven't been able to. So I'm, uh, we need to do this. We need to do this and we need to fix what was, I mean, it just in my, never in my imagination would we have to worry about have, you know, being beat out by the sugarloaf shops, but you know, clearly we are. So we have to fix that part of the zoning. Yeah. And that's really what a lot of this says. And again, um, on, on the back of your, packet there's a one page like two paragraph amendment that i don't know if i'm i'm going to be allowed to do i was going to send this to lisa again to talk to her a little bit further about it
but she said, why don't you just go forward with the one that's had the hearing and then um, just promise the, the uh, planning board you would take no action until and do no other um, post agreements until you had a chance to have hearings. And I would I would swear to that on oath and uh, we wouldn't, that's not our intent. And I agree that we need to fix, fix it the way it is because it shouldn't be allowed everywhere. Um, should only be allowed where, you know, where we recommend. And so anyways, that's that's really the that's the warrant. So I don't we, see why we can't do this. There's nothing controversial on any of this, really. We should be able to rip through quote, quite a bit of it. Um, but if if you know, I know Casey's going to work on consent agendas where you can cleaning up some other stuff. Whatever you can put it in the fall, I'm yes. good with that. So, so we'll, what we could do is I can pull together consent articles, and you guys mm -hmm. can look at them. But okay. I want to have a discussion with Dan and Lisa so that we do it the right way and, and Dan's comfortable with it because he I really agree. wants to move this along for public health and safety issues. Yep, I agree finance with that. committee question. Sure. In the past, uh, the finance committee has always reviewed the warrant articles. Yeah. Uh, that uh, a financial yeah. nature. Of course. And I guess we're going to have need to do that this year also. Yes, please. Yes. When are we going to get them to review? Well, you you will have them by Friday. I want you to have them by Friday. Or before but if you don't have a chance to vote on them, you can vote at town meeting. Or or hold a meeting. You know, sometimes we'll do a or hold a meeting between that. Yeah, like that. a lot of times, a lot of times we we schedule a meeting and post it prior to the town meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Can you yeah. put? Will you put this on the agenda just in case they are ready? Yeah. For us to. I'll send it to you as soon as I have something. I should have something. No, no, no. I'm talking about the agenda done. tomorrow for the finance committee meeting. Mm -hmm. To review the warrant. We have, yep. we have the review of the budget and the review of the warrant article. Yes, please. Hey, Jeff. Yeah, that's a good idea. In that way, if you have them, we can discuss them. If you don't, we'll just put it off till a meeting prior to annual town meeting okay thanks Jeff. i'm hoping i will have them because i really would like you guys to be able to put your recommendations in the warrant yeah we used to do it in ashfield and it was so yeah. much easier for people to understand yeah yep that'd be great no, the only yeah, thing no, i, under, I understand to, what you're saying i just want to make a comment on the pilot um tiff Part of it is not really that we give up that much, but it triggers this on the state level. And I think he was making another, um, this is part of his expansion plans. And mm -hmm. you know, if he does not kicked out, you know, gets a TIF, then he's not going to get the state kickback. And I don't know if he's going to get be able to get all the financing. Right. I understand yeah. that. I just don't have all the information and I can't find it anywhere, Carolyn. Well, we can we leave it on. Yeah. Let's see um, it's, kind of it's fine. It, we can leave it on. I'm just saying that if we don't have the information, what you would be asking people to do is execute the TIF without, we may not have the actual document. Yeah. Okay. Well, we just might have to because I, you know, I, I don't want to hold him up at all from, from. Experience. You know, I know. Yeah. I mean, to me, that's, this is, you know, this is how you support your businesses, the good businesses. Yeah, and he's been a great one. Here's the problem. I still have to get all these other things done before town meeting. That's the problem. You need to clone oh. your... <laughs> I need another me. I know. And another Jennifer. <laughs> and another Jennifer. There's so many. Um, okay, so uh, I think that's, that's all I've got. If anyone else wants to say anything about the budget... <laughs> articles that's where we're at at the moment um and then yeah, I, don't know if the, I don't know if the microphone is open at this point for people that just called in oh please yeah chris if you've got yeah, okay. I'm sorry this is chris harris and, and okay. i'm going blank because you were reading through the warrant article so quickly at the end but um in terms of the cpa funding articles i, yeah. I heard about the north american or north main street north america is it, yep. it's appropriate, but North Main Street is more appropriate. Yep. Um, in terms of the acquisition of land, et cetera, near Frontier, 
But did the two cemetery projects get captured into that? I mean, maybe it's going to be a, another one that you group together to shorten the annual town meeting. I, I couldn't hear there's that. Four, there's four that CPA happened. articles in the motion. Yeah, I think I just said, oh, there's a CPA article, but I didn't, you know, but but it's not kind of blown out yet here on my printout as to all the items that make that up. But I think that's right. Because you always do that CPA, you fund certain things and then and then you separate the rest of the money kind of how by law every every meeting. Right. So there's so, part of so, that motion, Chris, includes more than one request. Okay. Yeah, 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 so that's all in the CPA article. It was, it was going so fast, I, I didn't hear it. Yeah, sorry about that. Thank yeah, you. What was that? That was. Um... Trevor's worried about getting running out of time. <laughs> yeah, what happened? Oh, yeah, Article 20. Yes, yeah, so I just skimmed over that, Chris. You're right. But there is there is other articles that make up that Article 20. There's other items. Yeah. And maybe that's our, that's our time to go. No. Can <laughs> I make a motion as a finance committee adjourn? That's okay. fine. We've I'll got second it. Um, I second it, John. Any discussion? All those in favor? John Pareski's in favor. Jeff? Jeff Upton, yes. Julie? Julie Talbot, yes. Who else is here? <laughs> we don't even have a quorum anymore. Uh, I, I believe we did earlier. Yeah. Well, thank yeah, you, Bruce St. Peter's no. was there. Yep. Thank you so oh, much. Bruce here. Okay. Yep. So then the uh, finance committee meeting is adjourned. Julie, can you do minutes again? Oh. I would yeah, appreciate that. that. <laughs> no, I didn't take any notes. I thought that they were just sort of rolled into the blackboard minutes or not. Yeah, it's, it's recorded. It's recording. We didn't vote anything. No. no, except to adjourn and open. Yeah. And just yeah. review. Yeah. I can um I can put the recording on each one of those meetings so that the same recording is on each committee. Okay. Thank Correct. you. That's right. great. Great. Well, thank you guys so much for really sticking out with us this whole time and, and getting through. I know that was a lot and you had a meeting before, so I really appreciate all that work that you guys are doing to um to hopefully get a good meeting together for us. Um, so moving forward, uh, let's see. Uh, uh, do we, um, so we did that, we did that. Um, is we there have an any item other, unanticipated. Yeah, so I'll hit that. Is there any other public comment out there? Um, I know Chris had a comment. Is there any, but any other comments out there? Make sure the public has a chance to talk. Mm -hmm. uh, no other comments for me. Thanks for everything okay. everyone is doing. Chris Harris. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Chris. We're going to have we're going to be talking about this tomorrow at our selectmen's meeting. Yeah, so we'll there. get the more information for you. Same bat time, same bat channel. Um, so the uh, so okay, any board of health announcements other than the COVID nineteen updates? There's it just which, feels like before it we get to by that, the hour. Trevor, before we get yep, to that, go ahead. Uh, Let's uh, vote on this request for COVID-19 funding before we get cut off, the three of us. Oh, okay. Thank you. Um, so, and that was to adjust the... Um, yeah, I make a motion that we increase the COVID-19 spending limit from for emergency response for the pandemic from uh, the uh, 25000 to 150000 I'll second that motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Dave Wolfram, aye. Aye. Aye, Carolyn Ness. Governor McDaniel, aye. Thank you, D Dave. I really appreciate that. I would have, Is that a budget item? What's that? No. No. Is that a no. budget item? No. No. It's not. That's no. that deficit spending account, John. Okay. That's that's our de deficit spending. We just I, I just picked twenty five thousand off the top of our head, John, initially. Because I didn't realize that's that okay. Yeah, okay. and so this is just increasing the the level. We have to get approval from DOR. So do we have to adjourn because it's nine? Please tell me, yeah. Um, we might, yeah. <laughs> Why don't you do that? Definitely okay. have to adjourn. And, and we'll hit on everything else tomorrow at our, at our select Thank board meeting. Thank you, everybody. Okay. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Good night. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Chris.
I, Carolyn Ness, adjourn. Hi, Dave you. Wolfram. All right, thanks, Dave. Thanks, Casey, for all you're doing, and thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, Jennifer. Go <laughs> home.